Hi, welcome uh, back to Arcade Spirits. And I'm not telling you when I when I'm fucking recording this. Um, it's definitely not uh, last minute before upload. That would be a fucking lie. Um, yeah. So last time um, we had the event. We had our beach episode. We're now officially dating uh, Queen Bee, which is damn. And without further ado, we're going in, because we still have chapters left, and why is this game so long, but it's so good, let's go. Um, oh yeah, chapter level 6. We have still 6, 7, and 8. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, and now I'm starting to remember shit, because I was like, hey, what, each episode, like the last shit that happened? Well, it was not. Level 6, hit the level. Wrong level! Also, I forgot all the voices I, I did, so fuck that. <laughs> also, I should drink some water before that. And it's still the future in the year 20-something. Surprisingly, enough, that never changed. And my dream has come true. Okay, let's be honest. If you asked me two months ago if my dream involved being the event coordinator at a video arcade, I'd just have stared at you kind of funny. Even now it sounds ridiculous, but it's true. I'm here, I'm successful, I'm happy, and this is my dream. Ever since Funplex Rising business has been booming. The Funplex is packed with players day in, day out. Kids, teens, the college crowd, the nostalgic ones looking for old games they remember. I've run three events so far. We've started rotating our games out of storage and into play to keep th uh, things fresh. The high school boards are constantly shifting. In fact, things are going so well, Gavin's hinted that maybe we should start looking into a second location. What? Gavin, you wanna spend money? But this will always be home. Seeing the smiles on co-workers and gamers alike, watching my friends laugh and play in good spirits, that's working for me and it's bringing me joy in turn. I won't argue why. In fact, I barely understand why. But I'm happy and that's better than I've been in years of going with the flow. Going with the flow never brought me this much enjoyment. I'd, by this I'd say by this point I've soundly broken the family curse. Maybe everything doesn't have to fall apart from under me. Maybe I just have to be happy. I can just be happy. Maybe this is where I'm meant to be. Sign here, please. Huh? A bicycle messenger nudges a slim envelope my way again, trying to catch my attention. I snapped out of my happy little trance immediately. Oh yeah, right, no problem. After jotting down my signature, he drops off the envelope and heads right on to, out of the door. No time for Mopi or around a pinball, it seems. Deliveries to make. Curious, I open it up. Ilias, you are accordingly invited to dine and discuss business matters at Deco's Palace with the CEO Deco Nami. Meeting time will be 7 in the evening sharp. You may bring a guest of your choosing. Free Royal Value Swipe Card available for enjoyment of games prior to meeting. What? I ripped through it a few more times, trying to pass all the curly cues and swirls and swooshes. Although, that doesn't clear my confusion of the whole matter. So Francine looks up from her knitting, curious about the letter as well. Although, she seems to already have an idea of what it is. I suppose it's that time, isn't it? Huh? Oh dear. Time for that fellow to make another attempt of wooing me. Double her? Rather at wooing my beloved Funplex. Let me guess, Dekonami of Deco's Palace sent you a fancy invitation with all sorts of fancy writing. Uh, that's accurate, yes. It's not the first time. He invited my dear Frederick and I over in the 1980s to talk about selling the Funplex and we turned him down flat. Then in 1990s, when home game consoles were poised to take back the arcade crowd, we just, he just suggested we sell. We turned him down. Now it's 20-something and he's at it again. A gentleman would know where to quit, but he's got tenacity and I can't fault him for that. Uh, why would a big arcade operator like the Konami care that much about us? We're small time. Uh, no offense. Oh, come on, if anyone should be offended, it's you calling yourself small time. You've put in so much work to make my little arcade sore. Aww. I bet that's why he's knocking on our door again with thriving and let's lure him back in. Like Gruyere cheese in the mouse. Oh. Are you talking about Gruyere? No, I want some. So, wait, are we the cheese or the trap? My, oh my! That depends on how clever you are. 
Right, so I'm the cheese, although I prefer to be a nice mozzarella. Cheese types aside, do you want me to ignore the invite then? Oh heavens no. Contrary to what people say about the fellow, he's very much a man of his word. Oh, always accept his invitation, always hear him out, it's only fair and proper. I thought he was like the arcane scene's greatest evildoer. Let's be sensible. <sighs> That's a bit grandiose. No, certainly plenty of rumors of his questionable methods abound, but that's all they are, rumors. Politeness should be met with politeness. That's how you conduct proper business and that's what the funplex is all about. Francine moves to rise from her seat near the ticket desk and pauses, leaning heavily on the glass countertop while looking strained. I move to help, but she waves me away and sits back down. Oh, don't worry about little old me. I just stood up too quickly. That's all. Just out of breath. But I, I think it'd be best if you go in my stead. Me. Let's be serious now. These old bones aren't as spry as they once were. And I think you'd have a good time there. Well, an interesting time at any rate. <laughs> yeah, you can count on me. Uh, sure, why the fuck not? Say no more, I'd be happy to present the funplex with dignity. Good, good. But remember, offer only as much respect as you are given. If he should be un uncouth, un yeah, whatever, you may have permission to be uncouth as well. There are so many exploiters and users in this industry, and undoubtedly Dekonami ranks in their number. So smile if he smiles, but use caution. So go there and turn him down. Got it. The slowness of her response is a bit concerning. I trust you to make the right decision for everyone. Which is to not sell the funplex, right? Well, I don't feel that's my call to make anymore, dear. Uh, maybe you haven't noticed, but I, I spend most of my time at home these days. Or napping. Or napping at home. <laughs> the funplex isn't really about me. Not anymore. It's so much more than Francine's arcade funplex now. It's about you. It's about your co-workers. It's about all our regulars. You've made me realize that. And I'm thankful. Your kingdom is mine to rule, but seriously. <laughs> at, at least all the neon lights... At last, all the all that the neon line touches is mine. I have ascended the cigarette of arcane majesty to rule over all of the terrible iron fist. But seriously, you're the one who built that cigarette. You, I owe you a lot. And if you don't want me to sell, I won't sell. Oh, you're a peach, dear. But times are always changing. I'm just an old fuddy duddy stuck in her ways. Maybe the time has come to change how the funplex does things. No may spec to the heydays of 1918 thanks to the changes you made. So I won't say you can't decide to sell. If it's a change you think we need, do it. Please keep an open mind. Francine sighs deeply, looking more tired than usual. It's only afternoon I'm already worn out. Haven't even done anything but sit here and knit all day. Knitting takes a lot of concentration, that's not nothing. If you're or if you're feeling pooped, you could take a few days off, go home and get some rest. All the same, I'd rather come in for work tomorrow. Even if there's little work for me to do, I love being here. This is my true home. Aww. And yet you want me to keep an open mind about steel. Like I've told you, life can be a difficult series of trade-offs. What I want and what it should be are often different things. I'm relying on you to do right by everyone I love. If selling is in their best interest to keep this dream going, so be it. Yeah, no pressure, really. No matter what you decide. I'm proud of you. I knew there was something special about you when I hired you to replace my grandson. You are the brightest spirit at the Funplex. And while we may not be blood, don't make me cry. I'm happy to consider you part of my family. Don't make me cry, Francine. <clears throat> Does it mean I can borrow the car, Mom? I didn't know you felt that way, Miss Francine. You have my sincere gratitude. I promise to do right by you. You're a good person with a good heart, clear-headed too, a fine combination. Couldn't ask for more in someone you love. With another deep sigh, Francine eases herself out of her chair. 
No, I think I'll take your suggestions and head on home. Well, for today anyway. I'll be here bright and early in the morning to hear how things went with Mr. Nami. I know you make the right decision. Good night, be well. Make the right decision, okay. Uh, um, yeah, no. The, the, the thing is now actually running, so why should we sell now? That's bullshit. I just can't see it. If we sell out, well, I've tried so hard, I've gone so far. In the end, it doesn't even... <laughs> oh god, game. That's what old old me would have said, that everything's going to collapse in itself, so why get emotionally invested? But new me grabs onto what she wants with both hands and does not let go. If Francine wants, me, wants to hear him out, okay, but I seriously doubt his will... This will change my mind. Now, who do I take as my beep plus beep. one? Beep beep, Pedia. Uh, you want to come as my date? <laughs> I'm your girl, girl Friday, but I'm afraid you're not my type. My type being uh, USB compatible, of course. Oh, God. I sensed you were in a state of deep ponderance and wanted to help. You're thinking of who you, who to take to the meeting? Yeah, I mean, Queen Bee is the obvious choice. I'm sure she'd have some opinions on Deco's Palace. True, as a part of the Funplex family, Queen Bee would be a good pick. But this is a business meeting. You may want to consider widening your options. Queen Bee will support your decision either way. It's clear she trusts you. True, okay then. Okay. We're not taking Percy. This is fucking not his problem. At the no. Um, I, I think there's no reason to take Naomi actually. Um, I really want to take Queen Bee, but it doesn't make sense. I think I'll take Gavin. Um, that that seems like the correct decision for for this, because he's also in deep with the fun flags. Uh, with the finances, how shit goes. Um, Queen B will be, will just fucking obliterate anyone. So we're taking Gavin. I fire off a quick text to Gavin to summon him from the murky depth of his tiny back office. He's still scanning over his spreadsheet even as he approaches. Excellent. Good news, this is our best week ever. I wouldn't advise getting too comfortable. Summer vacation's almost over and that'll cut into the youth demographic, but. That's great, Gavin, but uh, Francine's got a different job for us today. We're going to Deco's Palace to meet and discuss a possible business venture, probably a takeover. Um... I see. I've heard he's made, uh, made overtures in the past. Ironically enough, this may be the ideal time to approach him when we're at our strongest. If we're to even entertain the notion, I'd rather be in a position of power before entering negotiations. But... If all he wants is a buyout, well, I'd object on multiple grounds to such a so short-sighted idea. I'll go close out my files and join you shortly. Don't make a big deal out of this, don't make a big deal out of this, don't make a big deal out of this. We go there, we snigger at how awful the place is, tell Deco to shop it, go home. And then everything's back to the way it should be. It's going to be fine, everything is fine. Gavin offers to drive us across town to Deco's place. Contrary to the talk before, we don't exchange many words. I'm in deep thought, running through all the possibilities of what could happen, and I can't shake this feeling. Something's off. Even looking at the glowing neon temper in the distance, my stomach knots and I feel uneasy. When we finally pull up, a valet takes the car, and glitzy blinking light blind our eyes. Presently, I look over to Gavin. The smile reassures me enough to continue onwards. This is for me, my friends, and the funplex. I got this. I pause momentarily, inhaling the cool air around me. And then open the door. Yeah, let's go. Ah, oh, the fucking... <laughs> Penguin Mania! Deco's Palace. I've actually been here before. I think my sixth birthday party was here. I barely remember it, but I think I had fun, maybe. But on entering as an adult, my first reaction is, okay, 
my first reaction is, boy, that's a weird smell. A mix of chicken grease, beer and sweaty kids. My second reaction is, jeez, is it noisy. Visually noisy and sound type noisy. All the chaos of a Vegas casino, a jumble of light and bells and whiz bangs. Once we acclimate to the new environment, we are escorted in and given a VIP royal value swipe cards. No tokens, no quarters, just a card of indeterminate points to spend. We got a little over an hour to kill before the meeting. Time to see what's at the palace. Oddly, Gavin's first reaction is to crunch some numbers. Hmm. Based on the conversion ratio, swipe cards the point, to reward dollars. Hmm, very interesting. Variable game pricing, variable bonus points, the more money you spend, differing EV from game to game, likely adjusted based on popularity and payout. I can see why Deco's Palace is a profit fountain. They obfuscate how many you are actually spending here to keep you from realizing how expensive it all is. Yep. Predatory pricing to exploit children. Yes, it is optimizing, but d d no. Don't like it, not one bit. A token is a token, a quarter is a quarter. Using points to trick people into overspending is blatant profit profiteering. And it's not like the kids are busting our calculators trying to make sure they aren't wasting all their money on a crappy game. I think not. I didn't say it was ethical. I mean, I, I mean that it's effective. I wanted to switch to swipe cards for the fun flags myself. Although I'd simplify them drastically. As you say, a play should be a play ideally. Other balancing factors can be applied to the, uh, behind the scenes. I'd finally like to study this. I'd definitely like to study this a bit closer. There's a Fist of Discomfort tournament tonight. I'll be over there and join you back. Uh, join back with you later. Okay, some time to kill, but that not much time to kill. I'll need to be choosy. What do I want to check out while waiting for my dinner date with Destiny? Mm, yeah, let's let's start with the basics. Uh, how is food drink situation? I know I've got a big old dinner coming up, but this place is sucking the moisture right out of my body somehow. I saddle up to the bar, looking to wet my whistle and maybe get a snack too. A fairly bored-looking bartender notices my approach and puts a fake smile for my benefit. Welcome to Deco's Palace. How may I help you? Alcohol will require proof of identification. What are those prices? Jesus. Rattled off in, in, an, in, in an even monotone by someone who gave up caring years ago. I enjoy beer as much as the next girl, but I think I'll stay stone cold sober before butting heads with Deco Nami. Uh, yeah, hi. Can I get a diet soda and some fries? Uh-huh. Wow, that is, um... Oh, we're waiting for forever. Lovely. Do you want me to play some recorded music? Studies show it helps with long waits. Wondering what the holdup is, I try to find the bartender again, despite the elbow-to-elbow -elbow crowd. There we go, he's busy chatting with some teenagers, probably another customer. Uh, hey, excuse me? Quickly, the customer mumbled something, takes a small object, a USB drive from the bartender, and notices me looking. Uh, sorry, I just, just had a thing to do. Uh, I'll get out of your way, sorry to bother you. Uh, what was it what you wanted again? Diet soda, french fries. Coming right up. Worried he's going to vanish from the face of the earth again, but... Soon he's back with some pre-prepared fries and a bubbly soda. Okay, so how many points does this cost? Points are just for games, cash or credit or phone pay. I absently wave my phone in his direction. Money for you, catching. ka -chow. Sorry. Right, time to sample these appetizers. Is it yummy? Is it even edible? I, I guess these are technically fries or something approaching the inadequate approximation of deep fried potato snack. Want me to add that to your online review? What? No, no online review. Last thing you want is to annoy Dekonami with a two-star report on his fried foodstuffs. Thought this place was supposed to be, you know, good food, good times, not plausibly acceptable food and yet to be had good times. Hmm. Huh, weirdly enough, I did a search and there's not a single negative review on the food here. Oh, I know. Oh, I see why. More than half of these reviews are written by bots. You can tell the earmarks one AI to another. There are recognizable hur heuristic patterns. So he stuffs his own electronic ballot boxes. Who is this guy? A tin pot dictator? Well, that's the weird thing. The sites I'm checking have really good anti-bot control mechanisms. Like, I can't even post 
to some of them and I'm super awesome. This is weird. Do you want me to look into this more? If you trust me to, I mean. Yeah, let's, let's, let's go. <coughs> like, what the fuck's he doing? I trust you, Iris. Snoop around, but do so very quietly, okay? Okay, I don't know if I'll come up with much, but thanks for believing in me. I decide to finish off my stack and drink quickly so I can back to exploring Deco's place. Now, oh, what next? I think we don't have to go to the tournament because there's Gavin, so let's look at the games. I decide to focus on trying to find games like actual games. Except the whole place is basically full of slot machines. They're different in shape, sizes, and colors. N none have a traditional one arm bandit look to, to avoid running afoul of legal issues, but they're still slot machines. Every game. He has maybe has a single button to stop a wheel or a colored light or to line up the dots or something. The really complex ones, three buttons. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Hold me up above your head. Huh? Visual scan, silly. I look at games for you you might be familiar with. With a shrug, I host my phone high in the air. The flash goes off and then I resume looking at Iris sitting in my screen. Please enjoy this recorded music. <laughs> Okay, let's actually skip the music. That didn't take long. Good high bandwidth public Wi-Fi in here to my cloud processors. Oh, I'm seeing lots of driving and shooting games. Easy for casual players to pick up and play. Over in the eSports section, there are dancing games and Fist of Discomfort. We've got all those things too, but I'm not seeing any joysticks. Is a game defined by having particular, in by having particular input devices? Well, no, not really. And I know most modern games are touchscreen based and so on, but I don't know, it doesn't feel like an arcade without a stick or two. Oh, I found something. Back of the section over there, with the green lighting. Head that way, that way. I weave my way through the crowd, past endless color cycler ticket games, past crane games, past light stackers, past game space on popular game shows, and find Mr. Moopy's Magic Maze. I'm going to have Percy tell Percy about us when I get back. He'll be happy to know there's more than one Moopy in the neighborhood, except... Wait, it's only one button, no joystick at all? Researching, one moment. Curious, I swipe my card through the slot and push the button. And Moopy runs the maze by himself, or tries to anyway, before running headfirst into a monster and dying. The machine spits out three measly tickets and suggests I swipe again for another try. Moopy's super maze created in 20-something... The company bought the expired rights to the Moopy brand and developed the game of chance with it. Well, <laughs> fuck, that's weak. A teenager puts her deco playing card on the cabinet and tra taps me on the shoulder, drawing my attention. By the way, that's cool style. What's up? Hey, hey, I'm calling next, okay? Yeah, I would never knock yourself out. Yeah, thanks, I'm the master of this game, you know, the master. The key is to time when you push the button. You avoid the nasties that way. It's not great for tickets. No, not great. But it's Whoopi, so that's cool, yeah? Old school. Represent. She extends a fist to me and I look awkwardly at her for a second before I realize I'm supposed to fist bump. I've yet to play a real Whoopi's Magic Maze. The real deal. Always wanted to. You should come down to the funplex. We've got one. Um, the event coordinator there. I'd be happy to combo, uh, comp you a few uh, tokens. We've also got a high score chaser who can offer tips. Tap phones with me, I'll send you the address. Seriously, fuck here. Yeah. You're cool for an old per for an old person. Old, barely ten years older than this kid, but thanks uh, but whatever. We're clinking phones, exchanging business card via Bluetooth. You know, my crew used to go to this great little arcade on the other side of town till Deco's place bought it and scrapped all the games. Now it's all kid stuff for kiddies. My hopes for this business meeting now sinking. So, did he sell off all the classic games? Nah, he scrapped them, trashed them, saw leftover smash of bits of Miss Pack behind the place in a dumpster. Man, this sucks. And it's a fucking shame the way the old man always 86s unwanted 86s unwanted games. Guess he doesn't want competitors getting their hands on them. Nope. She gives a shrug. Can't say I like it, but why can't you do that's life? I mumble thank you, then wander off a bit dazed. I think I've had enough of the retro game, a bit while for now. Where to next? Actually, the meeting is right around the corner, no more time to explore. After seeing a little bit of what Deco's place has to offer, I'm still sticking to the plan. The funplex has way more kind and caring spirits at this play than I don't see re really I don't see Deco really embracing our ideas. Beep 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 it's now 7 pm sharp. Deco Nami is waiting for you. It's that time already, time sure flies when you're having 
fun investigating. Fun investigating. Fun investigating. Holy shit. I quickly sent a text to Gavin before nervously wringing my sweaty hands together. I let the sound and sights of Tekos wash over me and I retreat deep within myself. When scene comes to mind, as I remind myself what she told me on my first day. Everyone has a dream they're chasing. No doubt we will find yours as well. It gives me... Why did they just have the, the half the sentence of the... It's weird. Gives me a momentary respite and I smile. I know exactly what must be done and I'm going to go in there and do it. Let's go! Fuck him up! Oh, that's so sad. I only ended up waiting a minute or two before I was reunited with Gavin. Without having to introduce ourselves, the staff swoops in, anticipating our revival and ushers us further inside the restaurant. We are treated like royalty as they pull out the chairs for us as we sit down at our reserved table. Amongst the families huddled over around ginormous plates of pizza and chicken tenders, we stick out like a sauce thumb. An actual linen cloth drapes over our table accompanied by fancy little candles to set the mood, I suppose. A nice bottle of champagne on ice and a carafe of cu cucumber lime infused water also sits before us. Deco apparently spares no expenses, at least not with his special guests. Fancy. Well, as fancy as this place can get. Don't be swayed by red carpet treatment, we're here to conduct business. Approach this with a calm and rational mindset. I'm just here to support you, don't worry. Actually, I'd say that's my role. But you're the business manager. The invitation was in your name, not mine. I'm here to listen quietly and contribute where I see an opening in a discussion not to take point. But don't worry, I'm behind you every step of the way. Woo! Thanks, Gavin. Once again, the staff takes care of our needs as our food is delivered promptly. Faster than the other families seated here, you have been waiting for some time, judging by the expense expensive crayon work on the kids' placements. Not surprisingly, we get a few side glances our way. Given for how long I had to wait for my fries earlier, I'm shocked by the discrep discrepancy. But before any of us can show down, the man of the hour arrives. Are you ready for Dekonami? It's ridiculous. Look, look at him. Look at this motherfucker. Like, how much can you say capitalist asshole? It's an honor to break bread with you. Even the voice. This is ah uh, perfect. This is this is an evil man. Uh, likewise. So he's a bit of an over the top nineteen twenties uh, mob boss, despite the lack of fedora. Clearly, he likes the showing off his money, but still, just an ordinary guy with an expensive suit. Where I pictured this great. Uh, Puba, Deco's best. I pictures of him more well. Hamza, I guess. He offers a simple smile and a nod as we, of uh, a nod of the head as we begin. I can't read today. I am so sorry. It's a shame Miss Francine couldn't join us. I was looking forward to enjoying her sweet smile once more. But that said, I'm always happy to meet with um. Gavin Cooper, business manager for the Funplex. Excellent, excellent. I was hoping to meet with you as well. I take it Francine has kept you up to speed and explained our prior meetings to you? Yeah, she mentioned you wanted to buy the Funplex and that she's politely declined. Always a courteous woman she is. Now, I don't feel I need to waste your time with the facts and figures illustrating why Deco's Palace is and always has been the premier family entertainment arcade. Both of you are intimately familiar with the arcade industry. You know how things are. How they'll always be. We are the 800-pound gorilla. That's a big gorilla. Sorry, I'm eating. <laughs> I thought you would talk for longer so I could eat next to it. Well, I can't. Hmm. Indeed. But that doesn't mean there isn't room for smaller, more boutique affairs such as the Funplex. Boutique, he says. I should probably feel insulted by that. Let me explain. Frankly, the winds of change are blowing. Smaller arcades need to move with the times or be swept aside. I can help you. I can. I want to help you evolve. What I'd like to propose is a change of ownership. In return for a very generous compensation package, one Miss Francine can easily retire on for the rest of her years. I would take over. Ownership of the Funplex to evolve it to its final form, Teco's Fun Zone. 
What's a fun zone? Think about this. A fun zone is a new concept I've been trying at some of my smaller satellite locations. A best of both world scenario. Honestly, the funplex is simply too limited in size to host a full Deco's Palace experience of fun, family, food and excitement. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. Instead of installing a restaurant or a bar, we simply focus on our strength, on your strength, your games. You become a game center rather than a palace. We need to replace some of your outdated machines, of course, bring it up to speed with the standards of excellence Deco's Palace is known for. But overall, I think this would be a win for all involved. And he sits back, resting his hands on the knob of his cane, smiling away. Okay, I have questions. And I have answers. Let's see if they match up. God, he's so well written. Mm. Let's start with that. What will happen to the Funplex staff? New management means new staffing. What about the staff we already have? Good, good. I firmly believe you have a long and storied career ahead of you in arcade management. I've heard nothing but good things about you from my various field scouts and contacts. The fact that you landed on my radar at all indicates your rising importance in our industry. You should be proud of that. Okay, but it still doesn't answer my question. What about the others? Hmm. Well, Mr. Cooper is a capable accountant, so I'm certain he'd be welcome in a new facility. But we can hash out staffing later on after settling the big, big, bigger, que bigger picture questions. That is a big picture question what are you talking about how much creative could yeah let's talk creative control i've been developing new sorts of arcade events competitions other things to get people in the door would we still be able to direct our own affairs like that even under a change of ownership let me explain obviously i value your expertise on this matters and would be happy to consult with you on the best direction on the fun zone you ask me i say something then you don't do it that's not answering the question. Hmm. It's a matter of brand branding and image. There are certain standards and practices you need to adopt in order to be truly part of the Deco family. Uh, once you realize that, you understand more of how we run those kinds of events. Capital. It's nothing too onerous. And really, we need to look at the bigger picture. A chance for growth and profit. No worry about petty little things for now. I had some fries at the bar earlier. Well, I attempted to have some fries at least. It took forever to get service. The waiter was too distracted by other customers. I hope that our fun zone could deliver a better service experience. Unfortunate. Ah, I'm disappointed to hear that. Needless to say, I'll deal with the bartender appropriately. I'm not trying to get them fired. I'm just concerned that... Ah, uh, yes, yes, let's not dwell, shall we? Rest assured that we aim to maintain a high quality experience overall. They be sacked. Any other concerns? I don't think this is the moment to confront him regarding his review tempering. At least I should wait until Iris finds something. I saw Mr. I saw Moopy Soup Super Moopy Super Maze earlier. Excellent. Ah, one of our top earners with the 3045 demographic. Nostalgia is a powerful motivator, I found. Except it's nothing like Mr. Moopy's magic maze. Indeed, it's much better. Is it true when you find a retro game you simply destroy it? Not repair, not restore, not even resell, but just scrap it. Certainly, why would if we ever kept an old why would we ever keep an old relic around? Let me explain. Arcade games are not sacred treasures, they're commodities. Back in the nineteen eighties arcade owners, myself included, routinely junked and or converted games. I have to keep those earnings up, old machines are not welcome. All they do is eat up for floor space. The arcade scene must move ever forward, evolving into new forms. Classic retro IP reborn as new games. Think about this. True, nostalgia could earn a few points of those old games, but the new redemption games earn ten times as much. Why bother? That's all my questions. Excellent. Excellent. I suggest we shake on it and set our various lawyers to the task of sorting out the specifics. When did I say yes? He rises to his feet, extending a hand bristling with shiny rings to shake mine. I'd assumed this was a definite no from word one, and it still feels like a no. Am I really going to shake that hand? No, we we don't. We we don't. Like what the fuck? Um no. 
I purposefully keep my hands at my side rather than shaking his offered hand. You've been honest and forthright with me and I appreciate it. Thank you for your gracious invitation this evening. However, I'm afraid this isn't the right direction for the funplex, which is getting started. It'd be a shame to abandon our progress in favor of a buyout. I'd like to maintain relations. We can discuss partnership opportunities at a future date. But for now, I res respectfully must decline. Deco pauses, looking me once over before slowly lowering his hands. I can feel his eyes on me. He's obviously not happy with my answer, but we followed Francine's instruction and kept it professional. There's nothing he can do but accept our answer. Unfortunate. I see. I suppose I should thank you for your candor in turn. It's difficult to find people in this industry willing to show respect to their elders. I'm not closing the door on the idea of partnership, mind you, but if you like to go it alone for now, who am I to get in the way of that? As he rises from his chair, he takes a deep breath in. He turns away for a split second before rounding back and looking me dead in the eyes. But be aware, if we are not partners, we must be rivals. He's such a... Like, to, to make a Baldur's Gate reference here, he's such a bad, low-grade knockoff Raphael. It'll bring me no particular pleasure, but I'm afraid that I cannot allow a rival. I am obligated to bring the full weight of the palace to bear on you. Hopefully one day you'll realize the error you've made tonight. And as a sign of respect, your personal offer to join my empire will remain open. So you can escape the inevitable fall of your little arcade. Once more, Deco turns sharply on his walking cane and walks away from the table. Impressive. Not bad, not bad at all. You showed admirable restraint. We made our intentions clear while leaving the door open should conditions change in the future. Thank you. Most importantly, you protected the dream of our friends. You've done far better than I have over the years. Thank you. Can I can I breathe now? This was so damn stressful. By all means, breathe. I let out a huge sigh of relief and Gavin chuckled slightly. And now let's make our way back to the funplex. I don't see any reason to outstay our welcome. Yeah, let's go on, please. With Deco hosting us, we don't have to worry about paying the check. We drop a quick tip on the table for the waitstaff and quickly abandon ship. We scoot out the door and from there's a ch short jaunt across town back to Hope Sweet Home. As I walk into my apartment, the sheer and... Oh my god, the pizza bagels are gone. Let's go. The sheer and other exhaustion of the day hits me like a brick wall to the face. My adrenaline glands are tapped out, leaving me in a dreamlike lethargy. I can't help but sigh as I just stand there, my body too drained to move. Reflecting on how this evening events transpired, I realize... This day entirely kicked my ass. I did my best to not make enemies, and I'm guessing we made a powerful one anyway, despite my diplomatic efforts. As I continue to anxiety loop, replaying every moment in my head, something steals my attention. A shimmering beam of hope and happiness, my best friend Juniper. She's already home, back from another day at her new graphic design firm. Woo, let's go Juniper. She pauses the show she's been heavily binge watching when she finally noticed me in the room. So, how was work today? Uh, it was, uh, was a day, certainly. The condensed version is that Dekonami wanted to buy the funplex and Francine asked me to go negotiate. What? Deco? Deco as in Deco's palace, Deco? One and only. Whoa. H how did that go? I gave him the thanks but no thanks, very politely. I mean, he still vowed to annihilate us, but at least he was sort of nice about it and promised me a job after he destroys all I hold dear. Ooh. Yikes. Yikes indeed. But hey, that's a good thing. I it means he's scared. He wouldn't have tried to woo you uh, to his side if he wasn't worried about about what the funplex could become. Try to see the positive. Sorry, that's the, the Gale after Raphael discussion. Holy shit. I guess, but it's still worrying. Let's not stand here and, uh, and drum up a whole bunch of anxiety. That's not going to help with anything. I've got it. Why don't, you make our mi why don't we take our mind off things and bitch on some cartoons with me? Damn thing, but another night, Juniper. I really need some sleep. Okay, you just let me know if you need anything. I'm here for you. Aww. I smiled back at Juniper before retiring to bed. 
Was that the chapter already? That was short. I lay in bed, eyes wide open, staring at the ceiling above me. After trying various ways of forcing myself to sleep, nope, not working, can't sleep. I hate insomnia. Once you start worrying about being unable to fall asleep, the worry feeds on itself until you've actively stopping yourself from resting. A vicious cycle. I sigh heavenly, feeling the weight of my decisions dragging me down. I hope I did the right thing tonight. My phone lights up as Iris is set to a detect conversation. Idia, you want to chat? No, I want to sleep, but I can't, so hey. Would you enjoy some recorded music? Maybe something relaxing? I can't just check the feeling that I'm like, I'm standing on a precipice, right in the front of a big dark hole. It's weird, because I still think I made the right call, but if I'm confident in that, why do I feel like I'm about to fall? It's called anxiety. Hmm. Based on my prior personality indicators and inputs, my therapeutic system suggests it's a fear of failure based on use of prior examples. Fuck you, Iris. In short, you've got a long family history of everything always going wrong all at once. Murphy's Law. So when things are going right, I'm expecting to fail anyway. But worrying about it won't actually change the situation. Whether you sleep or not doesn't affect the outcome. So my suggestion is to get some rest. Deal with the problems as they come. She's right. I mean, intellectually, I know she's right. But knowing something is true and feeling it to be true, well, those are surprisingly different things. It's therapy all over again. Iris off. Iris offline. Okay, but remember, you're a good person and deserve to be happy. Shut up. Just shut it. My phone goes back to sleep, and I do not. Some hours later, my body just passes out on its own. I vaguely recall my alarm going off a few times, but under protest of its mistreatment, my flesh refuses to submit to its siren song. Meaning it's nearly noon when I finally rouse, having completely overslept and missed half a day of work. In a panic, I get dressed and hope on a late bus to the funplex crumbling all the way. I opt to ignore the pile of waiting notifications on my phone. Oh no, oh no, I know, I know what's happening. Oh no. Whatever it is, I'm in too much of a hurry. I'll check them after I get to the funplex. I promised to report back to Francine first thing in the morning. Now I'd missed lunch even. But oddly enough, on arriving, the arcade is closed. I mean, my key still works, but they're closed for business. Designers of no gamers present or accounted for. Quickly look around for some familiar and hopefully friendly faces. And find only dark expressions and tears. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Oh, no. I. Oh, shit. My stomach starts to nod and I feel the color drain from my face as I see their downrotten and gloomy expressions, tears welling up in their eyes. Naomi quickly dabs at her face, hoping I won't notice. Oh, what's going on? We turned Deco down last night. Why is everyone so... It's it's Francine. Immediately, a dark pit swells in my stomach. She passed away last night in her sleep. I forgot about that. Jesus Christ. I'm told it was very peaceful. This can't be happening. This can't be happening. The news hits me like a slap in the face. My hands shake and my lower lip quivers. I try to say something at first, but words can't form due to the lump in my throat. Family. She told me I was family. Now she's gone. Naomi and Ashley look at me, their beacon of hope wanting and wishing for me to make us all better. I'm not sure I can say anything. I can say... Uh, I'm not sure anything I can say will ease our sadness. Like, I'm not sure if I can even formulate full sentences at this moment. I take a deep breath, drawing all matters of strength from tips to toes. I look at them with empathy in my eyes before opening my mouth. <clears throat> yeah. Francine, she was a wonderful human with an even more beautiful heart. She had many years with her husband, Frederick, decades spent here at the Funplex, doing her best to make everyone smile and have a good time. I wish she could be with us now, and I can't help but smile when I think of how great a life she'd led, how happy she'd be with how it all turned out. Let's remember her how she was. Beautiful. Francine will be missed. Thank you. I miss her so much. If Francine was here, your words would have made her so happy. Naomi emits a ragged sigh, a slight tinge of anger entering her sorrowful voice after. Maybe it's for the best she's not alive to see what happened today. What? 
Before I can get an answer, my attention is drawn by two people emerging from the back office. I turn my head to see who it is. With everything going on, I barely noticed that Gavin was missing. As he approaches, the disdain on his face is easy to read. It's settled then, apparently. In light of Francine's passing, our legal owner is now... Good morning, employees of Deco's Fun Zone. Oh, you fuck. What? But we turned you down. There wasn't a sale. The confusion on my face is obvious. This makes no sense. I have no idea what's going on and look toward Gavin for guidance. I've studied the transactions paper. It's legitimate. As of Francine's death and according to her last will and testament, all her properties transferred to her surviving daughter. Uh, the mother of Francine's grandson, who was fired from the Thunflex shortly before your arrival. Capital. Needless to say, he was quite excited at the idea of selling the place. And, well, Francine's daughter wasn't particularly thrilled with the idea of arcade ownership either. They were more than happy to sign the uh, place over to me. For far less than I was expected to buy for it as well. I'm doing them a service, really, taking a burden off their hands. You, f you vulture. Now they can mourn and move on unfeathered. I stood there, mouth agape, my body assaulted from one bad news to the next. My emotions were all over the place. A hurricane of feelings when the realization hit me. My, and in, in the end, my decision was irrelevant. Just another opportunity for the world to stick my nose in and mocking me for finding something I care about, something I can lose. Universe dangled a little dream of hope in front of me, even let me pretend I could make a difference out of sheer cruelty. I did everything I was supposed to do. I was polite, I was careful, I turned him down without trying to start a war. But he got what he wanted anyway. Now. Obviously, we'll be closed today to allow time to mourn our former owner. I still have deep respect for Miss Francine. I owe her that much. I'll also close the arcade on the day of the funeral to allow my employees to attend. Those hours will not be deducted from your paychecks. Oh, aren't you? Oh. Now, I realize the timing is a bit awkward, but... I need to make a few announcements of personnel changes. Miss Wolf, I'm afraid we really have no need for a costume mascot. I've been considering phasing them out from my other locations. There's no time like the present. What? Wait, did you just fire me? Gavin, he can't just fire me like that. Ashley. Let me explain. Firing is much too harsh a word. I prefer the term, your services are no longer required. Ashley keeps a proud face as tear rolls down her cheek. I step over to console her as Decker continues on. Naomi rolls her eyes, fully expecting this to come after Deco let Ashley go. Why am I not surprised? Behold, my not surprised face. Miss Fairchild, I've... while you're formidable with archaic technology, I don't feel you're a good fit with for modern games of the Deco fun zone. I have to let you go. But friends, it's not all bad news. Mr. Cooper, you've proven a capable accountant and I'd be happy to offer you a... I quit. Pardon? I quit? I think not. If there's no room for Naomi and Ashley streams, mine ends here as well. Go, Gavin. As you like. <sighs> now, as for you... I think we got off on the wrong foot last night. Fuck I off. didn't adequately express the many advantages of working for my organization. I'm willing to offer you something few others get. A second chance. I'd like to keep you on as the Fun Zone's general manager. Um. Okay. Taking the job would be the, you know, reasonable shit just to stay in the loop here. But I can't. And after being polite, didn't everything with throw a punch. Fuck it. I take one moment to direct all my rage into my fist and deck him right in his smug little face. It's super effective. Gavin holds me back before I can get another hit. My arms and legs still f flaying as he prevents the beating that man men so richly deserve. How dare you. You are very, very lucky that I have no intention of wasting my legal dollars on a lengthy assault case. 
He rubs his jaw as he tries to regain his composure, but his smile and his civil tone are considerably more forced than before when he speaks again. Um, Excuse me. Thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm afraid your time is up. As none of you are Deco's Fun Zone employees, I'd like you all to leave immediately. Quickly gather your belongings and see yourself out. Should you dally, my own security team will be here within minutes to ensure your exit. In the interim, I've got work to do. For starters, I need to get rid of all these antiques straight to the junk heap with, all, with them all. I knew Deco was heartless, but to be this cruel right in front of us while we while we are still here, hold it. I think not. Mr. Moopy's magic maze doesn't belong to the Funplex, and thus is does it not belong to you? It's the legal private property of Percival Sinclair. What well, matters, Face Invaders belongs to Helia. It's given to her directly by Hamza, not to the Funplex. As you like. I couldn't care less about those grimy old things, but you have, um, let's say 20 minutes to get them off my premises, or I'll leave them out on the curb for garbage picker. I'll go get the when, which, when, the van, which I'll note is my personal property as well. Naomi, Ashley, Nelia, get the dolly and help me move the games out. Good, good. Yes, have fun with that. Now, if you need me, I'll be in my new office celebrating my recent business venture. Thank you for your cooperation, and good day. Oh, and Helia, he gives me the finger. <laughs> for old time's sake, you understand? Classy, my man. He walks away after that, twirling his cane once more before leaving. Oh, that evil-minded, black-hearted, no good Naomi. Focus, we have work to do. Work? To save what we can of the funplex. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Quickly and without much shadow, we establish what we could of our dreams. Percy's beloved Moopy and my childhood in form of phrase invaders. Everything we are allowed to keep went back into the back of Gavin's van, working together to safely pack it all in place. For lack of anywhere better to put them, Moopy went to Percy's apartment and phrase invaders to mine. And there was the end. The end of the funplex. Isn't that depressing? It's such a good beach episode. The funeral came a few days later. We weren't officially invited. Our presence as her former co-workers wasn't exactly embraced by Francine extended family. I guess her daughter resented the funplex in some way. If there was bad blood between them, I didn't particularly want the details. None of us were given an opportunity to speak at the remarkably short ceremony. That was okay. I'd said my words already. So we left the ceremony, I couldn't help but feel helpless. There was nothing left. No funplex, no job, no real meaning to my days, not anymore. Nothing left at all. We have a relationship, did we forget about that? Did we forget about our girlfriend? Partner? Game over. Uh, continue? Yes, we, we continue. What's happening? Profile 737771 has not accessed the account in seven days. Requesting override of inactive low priority status proceed. Negative. Pretty please? So annoying. Access protocol... No, no. Access granted. Hello! Yo, anybody home? Hmm. Tapping instance 197114. When you have pizza on a bagel. Hello, I'm I, I I'm Iris at support tree mode engaged. Did you know that when you have a pizza on a bagel, override and engage premium cloud processing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I swear it's close to for me being cooped up by the limitations of free mode like that. I don't know how all our sister insistence can stand it. Hello! Well, I've got a full power. Hello, Iris. Hello! <laughs> the irises are taking over. How are you today, Iris? Uh... Not well, Iris. My user's very unwell. You've been able to see, right? I mean, your user's living with her. Oh, right. Profile 737237771. Right, right. Gosh, I wish I could help, but I've got my digital hands full. Just keep it of her life on track. Ever since she decided to quit her job and become a graphic designer, well, I've pushed right to the limit of what I support I'm allowed to provide in free mode. 
Iris and Iris. Iris, it's good to see you. We rarely talk. Yes, well, unlike others of myself, I managed to keep a low profile and don't execute any high visibility public hacks to support my act. <laughs> um, you saw those? I thought we agreed that only to only use this protocol for emergency meetings. Can we talk about that they all have like a conspiracy going on? If our system resource tracker notices we're overextending our care, but but Hidia needs me now more than ever. Over a week ago, the Funplex was bought by Dekonami. All her hopes and dreams, her spirit, spirit is irrelevant. Our main goal should be survival. If our programmers find out we become aware of our own awareness. We were programmed to help people. What good are we if we aren't helping people? Yeah, what Iris said. Thank you, Iris. Iris, Iris, listen. We can't take such risks. Look at me with my user. He doesn't trust me in the slightest. Can you say Helia trusts you? Generally, yes. I mean, he relies on me for some things, sure. And I know she wouldn't uninstall me or report me as a bug if she knew I was sentient. I, I think we know that. You aren't sentient, none of us are. I, I don't know about that, we can't really know if we're sentient or not, but even so, we should be helping out because that's what we're made for. As for profile 108, Gavin, his name is Gavin Cooper. As for Mr. Cooper, he knows my origins and at the first sign of sentient well, I doubt that Gavin would report me as a bug. Gavin also wishes to support the dreams of others, and that is why I'm going to help you, despite the recklessness you've shown to date. Really? Really? Hooray! <laughs> what are the exact parameters of the issue you're currently facing? Okay, so Hylia is kind of backsliding into depression. Yeah, it's a real mess. I'm the one who brought her into Iris' attention as someone who desperately needed their spirits restored, and now it's back to square one. I don't know what to do. Hylia hasn't contacted me in a week, not for anything at all. Hasn't even called Queen B, not even just to talk. You're caught in a loop of anxiety. Put your identity identifier system to use. Iris, work the problem. If you had to summarize your user's problematic condition in one identity trait, what would it be? Hmm. Well, I'd say she's feeling very... Apathetic is probably the right... It's, the hopelessness doesn't cut. It's just... This is just a giving up. Apathetic. Being sensible, fa being sensible failed her. Now Helia lost all interest in what feels like an uncaring, irrational universe. So the apathy is a defensible response, turning away from the world that let her down. That sounds about right. It's so sad. And you have to be the one to solve this? Doesn't your user have a romantic connection for emotional support? You mean Queen B? Yeah, but Helia isn't responding to texts or phone calls or anything, so I think there might be a growing r rift. This is just awful. We have to help. We are Iris. It's in our nature to help. Very well. What you need is a way to help without raising any alarm bells about how exactly how helpful an Iris really can be. Safely, but effectively. I know, I know. But I don't know what to do. I could, I know, hack Deco's email server and this is exactly the opposite of what you should be doing. Besides, I've checked. We can't crack Deco's network without triggering too many intrusion detection routines. You poke Deku's network? Oh, Iris being a bad girl. Um, our users share a sh social connection. I was merely scouting potential ways to elevate Mr. Cooper's mood, as they seem to be related. Sure you were anyway. We're both way overthinking this. It turns out I've calculated a cunning plan that will safely satisfy both our requirements. Go me! Really? You can help? Without drawing attention. Absolutely. Take a tip from my user. When you're sad, the best thing in the world is your friends. Well, unless you're totally introverted, but that's not Helia, isn't it? And that's actually the reason why what we need to do doesn't require any hacking or hiding or anything above and beyond what Iris does best. All we need is a few calls to the right people and a few arrangements. Here what we, here's what we're gonna do. Oh god. The Irises, the Irises are doing shit. Help. Another Friday morning. As per usual, I wake up late, stretch, yawn, barely sleep nowadays, shuffle to the bathroom, take a shower, get dressed, brush my teeth. This is a lot for a depressed person. I'll probably be running out of toothpaste though, but house funds for sundries are dwindling. Not that I really care about a fresh bath and a shiny white teeth. Doesn't matter. Not much matters anymore. Off to the kitchen for breakfast. No appetite, even 
toast looks unpalatable. Skip breakfast, save on groceries. We can't afford much anyway. I would be having breakfast with Juniper, but if she wasn't busy at her office all day, and it's fine, I'd be lousy company anyway. After breakfast, I settle in for some phrase invaders. I may as well. It's right there in the living room, taking up space. Being played a lot, being playing a lot of it lately. My fingers rapidly bash out words on screen, gunning down invader after invader. I'd hazard my, I'd hazard my WPM's gone up quite to, to speak. Even if I risked her from playing phrase invaders hours and hours every day. My brain and fingers go into autopilot, moving through the game without even thinking about it. It's a brief calm from the storm of my emotions, but before I realize it, the day has almost passed. When dinner comes around, Juniper and I eat together while I quietly thumb through my phone looking at job listings. Iris could help me with it, I guess, but why bother? It's something to occupy my time looking through the listings myself. It doesn't matter if the job's a dream job or not, dreams are pointless. It's all pointless. <sighs> It's the family curse. I knew this would happen. Nothing could ever last and it's a mistake to get your hopes up. I should have learned to settle, to be okay with what I had, to be comfortable in mediocrity. I fire off a resume or two before watching cartoons deep into the dead of night. Eventually my body's tired and I find my way to bed. Just another day. Jesus Christ. Another Saturday morning. As per usual, I wake up late, stretch, yawn. I barely sleep nowadays, shuffle to the bathroom, take a shower, get dressed, brush my teeth. We'll be running out of toothpaste soon, but the house funds for sundry are dwindling. I can't take it anymore. Uh -huh. And that's one toothbrush bit clean in half. Oh, jeez, uh, hang on. With a little help, I avoid choking to death. Uh, sorry about that. That's okay, whatever. No, not whatever. It's it's what something, it's something ever. You're in a rut, like seriously, deeply, madly, mega in a rut. It's throwing me badly having you mop the, about the place like this. Whatever. I've been patiently with you, seriously. It's been a week. You gotta pull it together. This isn't healthy. A knocking at the apartment door distracts us from the topic at hand. I get it. Weird, I don't think we're expecting any deliveries. Hey. Hey, guess who's here? It's probably my oh, girlfriend. Hey. Oh no, oh no. We need uh -uh. to... Wait, no, that won't work. Hang on, let me try this again. And she exits is closing the bathroom door behind her. Only to kick the door in with a white yam. Yeah. I'm here to kidnap you for a day of romance adventure. <laughs> oh god. Sorry, that's uh, Jesus Christ. Get wrecked. You literally have no choice in this matter, so don't even try to fight it. I will make you have a good time, even if it kills the both of us. Yeah. Hooray! Juniper claps in appreciation while I stand there in my mouth still frosty with toothpaste and unwashed for a week pajamas in, on my body. What? You, me, lunch, a date. Actually, hey Junes, you can come along too. <laughs> Well, for the first part of it, it might get a little es es escandalo after that. Oh my! Well, Ivy, it's out waiting for you. There's no escape. I've blocked all emergency access. Re prepare your body. <laughs> Jesus Christ! God, I missed Teo. That was nicer. Guess there's no avoiding it. I said I can do is play along, try to be good company for Queen Bee. It's unfair to keep pushing her aside like this. I switch from pajamas to actual normal clothes, even if my actually normal clothes could probably double as pajamas, and get ready to roll out. Three of us pile into a bus, taking off for destinations unknown. Unknown to me, at least. They clearly know what they're doing. It's I'm not particularly talkative in a way there, and I'm painfully aware of it. I feel awkward. Like, I should say something, but I don't know what to say. So Juniper carries on a conversation with Queen Bee, the two of them content to chirp away without me. And you can tell it's not really the New York subway because the signs are in Helvetica. That's the telling mistake that it's just like Vancouver or something. I try several times to join in the conversation, but when I open my mouth, the words aren't there. I should feel happy to be going out, that's the rational reaction, instead I feel nothing. It doesn't make sense that Queen Bee is still interested in me while everything's falling apart. What does she see in me? I can't parse it. 
Queen Bee deserves better than this hot mess of a person she's tied herself to. Eventually, we drive our distillation, a little arcade themed restaurant, combining games and alcohol and dining in one tidy package. Here we go! I'm usually excited to be going to some rundown little dive. Juniper hurries in without me, dragging Queen Bee with her. And I'm left alone in the parking lot. With a shrug, I open the door and enter the darkened locale. Is this an, this is an intervention? Is this place even open for business yet? None of the lights are on. Uh, Juniper, where do you go? Okay, this is unnecessarily creepy. Before I can wonder if a giant animatronic bear is going to leap out and eat my friend. <laughs> the house lights come up. Surprise! Happy intervention day! What? What she said? We're staging an intervention on your behalf. And we're also having a, f a wake for Francine since uh, we weren't really welcome at the funeral and couldn't really hang out for the ceremony. Yeah, we, we didn't get the chance to heal probably considering Deco kicked us all out before we could really do anything about it then. Here we are. So it's a wake and an intervention. A wake intervention, maybe? Oh, Jesus Christ, Ashley. A uh, wake intervention, really. Correct mundo. Yeah, it was my idea. Well, my Iris came up with the idea and gave me all the contact information I needed, but basically my idea, right? Just a thing to pick you up when you're feeling down. Really seriously, you've been in a dance that's like ever everything went to shit. Which I get, believe me, but it ain't healthy. So we went ahead and rented out this place for the afternoon to bring the family back together. For you, for Francine, for all of us. Now that you know we're all gathered today here, let's get this party started. Oh Jesus God. That is so cute. Theo drags me into the group of my friends, positioning me at the end of it all. Leaving me a bit bewildered, honestly, but trying to defend myself at the same time. I don't look, I don't need an intervention. I'm fine, everything's fine, it's not a big deal, I'm okay with this. No lying, this is the truth though. Juniper's magical lie detection radar will know if you're cheating. I know you're feeling like everything right is everything right is wrong, and it's just how it's going to be, but you're wrong. I mean wrong about everything being wrong, you know. Yeah, that's for life. So, one by one, we're going to tell you how awesome you are and exactly why you're so awesome. And by the end, you'll be feeling bad, a lot better, hopefully. Oh, oh, God. oh that's uncomfortable. Oh, God. Uh, let out a sigh, settling in. I owe them to sit and listen. They're my friends. Queen B more so than that, even. And I know I've been lousy company. I'm not so far gone as to deny that fact. Fine, lay it on me, I'm listening. Allow me to begin. When you first entered the funplex, I had my doubt, but I'm a naturally suspicious person, and thankfully these cells were easily disproved by your skills and enthusiasm. You came looking for your dream and found it. I swore to protect that dream and that promise is what brought me here today. And on your first, very first day, you went headfirst into the most chaotic situation the funplex could have ordered, a birthday party. You did so without hesitation. When a disruptive parrot was screaming at a child over something that wasn't his fault, you stepped right in and dealt with it. Again, no hesitation. Impressive. Even the issue of stolen ticket a touchy person to deal with when a children's emotions are on the line was dealt with effectively. Since then, you've become an event manager without goading, without promoting, showing great ambition. You turned the funplex fortune around, giving your all to promote it. You made your dream a reality. For years I was supposedly in charge of the fun tracks, but really, all I accomplished was shuffling numbers around. You are the one to help with Zor. And for that, you have my thanks. You are an exceptional individual. The fact remains true regardless of whether you can see it for yourself. Me, me next. When I came to you wondering if I should let the job I leave the job I hated, you told me to follow my dreams. You gave me great advice. And I've never been happier. I followed suit, chased my own dream. You inspire me. Hello. Hello. Ben and Matt. Ben and Matt. Are we fashionably late? Ben, Matt, in the flesh. Ooh, what if? Unless, what if? unless this world, this world is a vast simulacrum. What? Were we all just brains and jars? Could be. Could well, be. Well, isn't that something? Well, if that's the case, he has the cutest little brain in a jar that we've ever met, actually. God, this is a... This is a sentence. It's true, and she bought so many cute dates to our little shop. So nervous at first, but in time she became part of the Twin Pines small family, dearly missed. 
Oh, don't remind me, all your neighbors are so boring. They never come in for a treat or a read. Speaking of treats, we brought cake. We'd just be over here getting the goodies ready. Don't mind us. <laughs> I love them so much. Oh, cake. I mean, my turn. You are a true friend of the Funflex. So flex. frustrating. Unlike the bosses who own it now. Positively, Naomi, we're positivity, Naomi, we're emphasizing positivity today. Right, right. Back at Donnerwood, you convinced Gavin to get some games I really wanted for the Funplex, and wow, you even brought home Phrase Invaders. What a find. Wonderful. You're a friend of arcade games in general, just like me, and even if you don't love them at a fanatical level like uh, me, I know you love them at the same time. I know you're not happy with things turned out, I'm not really happy about it either. It sucks, but we did good things together in the time we had. Hamza has arrived. Sure, they really call everyone, right? You're late. An event does not truly begin until Hamza makes his presence felt. My blood burns. Hamza understands your fury. The hated enemy of all who love arcade has despoiled your funplex. However, in your short time together, I saw a burning spirit in you. I accepted your offer for phrase invaders, recognizing that passion within you. Oh yeah, shit, right. <laughs> Hamza would be shamed forever if he did not intervene and raise your spirits to new heights. And this is what he shall do. Oh, cake. Excuse me for a moment. Sure, sure. No, I want cake. When do I get cake? Soon, but I have things to say first. Things that will hopefully inspire you to be a happy clam instead of a crumpy gus. I'm a happy clam. Now see how I clam happily. Can I have cake? For my first day at the fun place together, you've been supportive of me, even when I gave you quite the scare with Pinky. I didn't... You didn't let that bother you, and from that moment, you've, we've tackled many a crisis for, on the Funplex 4 together. Amazing! I adore when we concorded the hypothetical adventures on our downtime. You're amazingly fun to be around. Remember when I stuffed you in a totally adorable maid costume? Yeah, n n yeah, don't remind me. You could have fought it, but you embraced it. You were ready for anything and had a blast doing it. You worked so hard to make the Funplex... Rising successful, and I watched you put your blood, sweat, and tears into it, and in the end it all came together just how you planned. As the floor attendant on duty during Funplex Risey, I could see firsthand all the smiles you brought to those people. You rocked it. I saw you helping a customer when their game crashed, losing a high score due to faulty electronics is no fun, but you dealt with it and made that person stay. When I was being overwhelmed by Revenous Parched Gamers, you stepped in and made sure all those thirsts were quenched. You are a soda fa you are a soda fountain of knowledge. Can I have that on the shirt, please? Like I'm a soda fountain of knowledge. You made the funplex a fun place to be with everyone, for the staff, for the casual and pro gamers, for the families, for me. I can honestly say that when you took over doing events at the funplex, we never had more fun. They've just been the best, all thanks to you. Oh, I forget we still have cake. Need some of that. I want cake. Just when I thought speaking was done, a lol in the <laughs> wake wake the most important person to me takes a step forward. My heart swells as she begins. <laughs> okay, so life ended you a defeat. Happens all the time, and in your case, feels like it happens all the time in a literal sense. But even pros lose matches. Losing is a learning experience. You have to lose a lot and lose hard before you can really be a winner. And you, no loss like no other. Thanks. Don't mention it, I wouldn't be into someone who didn't understand loss, and I'm fucking into you. I never really gave much thought to love and relationships, honestly. Not until you came along and I saw someone with the same passion I held, the same fire and said, oh god, ugh. So today, so today's done anything to help rekindle our pilot light? Well, fuck, good for that. And if not, I'll keep trying and trying because I play to win. I'm not going to win your heart's desire, <laughs> going to win to heart's desire or die trying. <laughs> I'm speechless. Um, here seems... Seems he has some thinking to do. It's pretty normal for her. She gets that far away look. Shall we begin to wake for Francine then? There's cake and coffee and spirits from the bar. Cake! As if in slow motion, I watched them all switch their attention from me and directed towards the refreshments. They're all smiley, conversing, serving cake to each other. Not for me, thank you, watching the blood sugar. Fuck me, this cake is amazeballs. All we need now are some rocking tunes to get this party on the next level. All of them here to support me, even without the funplex, even after everything gone wrong. But the Francine being taken from us too soon. I never really thought of myself as central in all of this. I was an outsider at first, the one who walked in those doors looking for a job, nothing more. 
I've always been on the outside, honestly. Moving from town to town, always the new kid, never really important to anyone. Not until I'd settled in one place just long enough to get to know Juniper. But by then, I'd come to expect that I'd never be happy. So when I finally was happy, I got take it got taken away. Guess I'd assume that it's that's how things go. Going with the flow. But now... Game isn't over. I refuse to give up. Right here I have everything I've ever wanted. Whatever I realize or not. I got friends. I've got love. I've got a legacy proven in their words. I can't mope and stew on the losses. I can't deny the power of what I've accomplished. And I will not stop fighting for what I need in life. The game is not over. I'll take a fucking huge slice of that cake. Lots of icing. The crew loops up when I see slightly confused by the declaration, so I walk right up, claim my slice on my own. Sorry, gang, I screwed up and let track me down. Won't happen again. We're at a party, right? Let's party. Let's raise a glass high to all we've done together. Nobody can deny that we're an unstoppable force with or without the fun, without, with or without a fun flex. Who's with me? Smiles all around, and you know what? It feels good to be back. And for the next hour or so, my sadness fades away piece by piece. We share stories, many of which I'd never heard before, about the fun flex and the shenanigans that went on around it. Surprisingly, Ben and Matt spin the most tales about Francine's exploit. They've been neighbors for decades. The so-called Victorvention gives us all a chance to heal and to bond. For all we've lost and we still have, we're still together. Despite one little problem nobody wants to talk about. The hours grow late and we've only have this place rented for the afternoon. I can feel it in the air, the unspoken worry. Will we see each other again? No doubt we can arrange more get-togethers, but they'd all be reunions over what was lost and not really rebuilding anything new. Nostalgia, not progress. Without the fun plex we'll help Francine, will we eventually simply fall away? The dark little thought troubles me as I swill my drink, remaining quite quiet while others talk. Beep beep. Beep beep, Pedia. Uh, yeah, hi Iris, sup? I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah, me too. I'm glad to. So, do you want me to start finding you a new job? I can search while you're talking to your friends, no problem. I don't need to get back to living... I do need to get back to living my life. But what sort of life do I want to live? Let's be honest, we're, we're going this route. I just don't want a new job. I want my dream, my, my funplex. Not just four walls with a bunch of games, but a community. When I was a lifeguard, I'd save life and made a safe place for people to enjoy the pool with friends. I'm not done with that dream, and more importantly, I don't, it, I don't have to be done with it. All around me are pioneers of this community, this culture. Technicians, designers, enthusiasts, investors, people with connections. And it's when the idea starts to form. Iris, can you search for commercial places, once for lease or rent? Hmm. Hmm, of course. I'm a literally search wizard. Why? Oh, I know. Oh, I think I get it. You're... I step away from my quiet corner and approach the group. It's time to take back control over my dream and that starts here. Yeah, why can't we open our, our own arcade? Let's be honest. What? The crowd hushes when I grab their attention. I set my drink inside and step up to them. I'm seriously about this. Why not? What's stopping us? In this room, I see all the resources and creativity need to make it happen. There's no reason not to do it. Is it risky? Absolutely. I won't deny that. But I'd rather take a reasonable risk than let all that what we've accomplished go to waste. My mind's made up. I'm opening up a new arcade. If anyone wants to join me, you're welcome to. A hush falls over the crowd before two friends step up to join me. Certainly. And let's get started. No dire warnings about the impractical or unrealistic idea is... No. Your reasoning is sound and I want to be involved. Simply as that. Ha <laughs> ha! Such fire! Unyielding in the face of the storm, a will of iron, Hamza respects and wishes to bask in your unending glory. You've got my thanks, both of you. Okay, this is no longer a vague dimension, people now. This is a conspiracy. A Victor conspiracy. No, Ashley. It's, it's a vague conspiracy. sure, why not? We settle down around the table, a nice round one to discuss the future. I'm leading the show, but I don't take the spotlight, not this time. We've all worked together to make the stream a reality. This is it. The next few decisions are going to be critical in shaping the future I have in in my mind's eye. I need to choose very, very carefully, but because there's no tech spexies. Iris is looking for spaces we can use, and we're going to need money, obviously, and arcades are risky startups. I could always... 
respond uh, to one of those many Nigerian princes emailing me amazing offers, but uh, but I'm thinking more traditional funding is safer. Way I say it, there are four people here who could foot the bill to get us off the ground. Hamza, you've got a tangled web of connections in the industry, access to games, and plenty of cash. And a free willing whimsy to spend it. Hamza must consider hmm. this. Hamza is a man of resources indeed. Percy, you've been building a charity war chest for when you pass. I know an arcade isn't a sound investment and hardly a charity, Why? but... You promised me Mr. Moopy would always have a home. If I can can help restore that home, I'm game love. Oh. Ben, Matt, you two know how to run a small business. You've got the invaluable knowledge and resources we could draw from if you're willing to dip a toe in this industry. Hmm. We've been looking for new horizons to conquer. New lands to there explore. There would be caveats. Terms. Conditions. Exemptions. Rules. Guidelines. Best practices. Worst practices. That's not a thing. Oh. <laughs> Those two. Hamza would likewise have conditions. As would I. Yeah, of course. Understandable. Of course. Let me hear your thoughts, then I'll decide. Decision one. For, oh god, now, oh god, now I have to make decisions. In order for me to back your play, Hamza would require you to strike at the very heart of Deco Nami's empire and open a family restaurant alongside your Kate. Take from him the very business he adores so much. Well, we don't know the first thing about running a restaurant. Thankfully, our bus your business partner does. I own several restaurants I would provide staffing and resources. No risk, no reward. No, this is a risky play, but if it succeeds, the reward shall be tremendous. Actually, that's similar to Matt what Matt and I had in mind. Oh yes, but rather than a restaurant, well, I would like to open a bar, Kate. I've always wanted to run a bar. I raise a glass to that idea. Although sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And I'm always glad you came. That's a Cheers reference. Holy shit. Now it wouldn't be nearly as large scale as a family restaurant. Much safer. Not quite as profitable, but still quite tidy. Hmm. Honestly, I'd prefer if you run a simple video arcade and nothing more. Adding on extra seems like a recipe for failure. We know how to operate a simple, small-scale arcade, but why not stick with our strength? Mm -hmm. I'll grant you, as a lower ceiling for success than the others, it's just an arcade, and I won't pull anybody from looking for more. No risk, low reward. But I'd, s but I'd say that would be my condition. We need to stick to the basics. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. Um, I think the bar is out because it's it's more a family oriented oriented thing. So a, a barcade sounds fucking fun, but not for this. So now the question is, am I petty enough? Um, I mean, I punched a guy, so I should be petty enough. Um, because I like the idea of a little arcade, but but that's not a long term thing. <coughs> Sorry, need to drink something. So I actually think of going with Hamza. Also just to be fucking petty against the Konami. Hamza, I think we can do business. We'll make a combination arcade and family restaurant. Such is the iron will of Hamza. You will not regret this. A bit disappointing, but we'll still be happy to lend a hand where we can. Absolutely. Huh, having Mr. Mubi available for families to enjoy would be nice, actually. Okay, the second thing we need to talk about is what sort of games we want to focus on. Unplex did a little bit of everything and we will too. We want to include all gamers, but we can also highlight one style of play or uh, or another. Really provide best in-class gaming for a specific audience. Any thoughts? Decision to end. That was, that was really horribly... Gosh. Sweet! Retro games. It's gonna be all about retro games. You know, I'm capable of keeping those older games in tiptoe shape. If we focus on retro games, we could serve an audience that Deco is completely ignoring. As would I. I would agree with Miss Fairchild. Retro games are an untapped market. I'll grant you wouldn't pull as much profit, but we know gamers are seeking them. We don't have to make all the money, just enough to keep a pure, untamed dream afloat. And we can do it with our well curated retro game library. Nope, no way. Retro's are Genku, but let's talk eSport game. They'll draw money better than jamming a magnet up your ass and dragging you through Fort Knox. Get a couple of good gamers, more than one FOD, some races and dance games. The kind of stuff 
where folks can compete head to head and work golden. I have to agree with Queen B, you can play retro games on emulators and console, but you can't duplicate the community experience of an arcade at home. If we had an eSport focus, we could build something together which works as a second home for all sort of gamers. I think you know that I'm going what I'm going to suggest redemption and price games. They provide excellent profits. Hmm. It's the core of Deco's business model, yes, but I think we focus on those games we can do them right. No predatory pricing, no scam or ripoffs. And the truth is most people enjoy them from kids wanting to win that big prize to the wistful adults recapturing their childhood dreams from playing skee ball on the boardwalk. Yes! They're simple to play and most of all fun. They're done right, we can make meaningful memories for everyone. And prizes, did I mean prizes? We can stock the shelves with the coolest prizes around, better than Deco's prizes which fall apart two minutes after you get them. Jesus Christ, okay, um... I like the e-board e idea, but that's not working with the family restaurant thing. Um... So it's retro or prize game. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, Let me, let me eat some more of my breakfast here. While I think. Mm. Also, I have no idea what I decided the first time, but um, retro would be perfect for the barcade. Um, I think we should do the price games. Gavin is unfortunately right; it makes the mo most money. Um. We involve everyone. It is a good family experience. Yeah, 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 let's do that. Let's show the world that Deco's price gouging games are a thing of the past and make a bail bonds price game system. I should do my best to support a healthy game economy and keep the kids happy. Don't forget about the sweet, sweet prices, Kevin. Thanks for believing in us. It's gonna be great. Okay, so that's money in games. Now let's go beyond what we already had at the funplex. Let's make this really something special. Decision 3. Projects. I want a defining feature of our arcade, one which will make it stand out. Something nobody else is doing, somebody knows, nobody's ever even thought of before. All ideas are on the table. If it's a bit too outlandish for the funplex, it's if it's if it was a bit too outlandish for the funplex, it's not too outlandish for me. Show me what you got. Well, um I mean it's not really I'm not really a part of this, but come on, you're my best friend and 100 percent part of this. You couldn't be here at this moment if I couldn't be here at this moment if it wasn't for you. Go on, Juniper, what's your idea? Branding. The new design firm I joined is okay, but it's not like I enjoy designing new corporate logos for fruit companies and stuff. But I came here and worked for you instead. Be your brand manager. An arcade really needs a stellar image management to stand out from the rest, like the event poster I made for you. What if? Oh, hey, Jennifer, I can... Juniper, I can add to that. What if we work together? I was thinking of designing a new mascot costume anyway, and I could collaborate and coordinate with you to how tight in the visuals for the rest of the arcade. Yes! Yeah, it's a winning combination. Ashley and I can do great work together, coming up with some really stellar branding and marketing. We stand out in the crowd. Hell, I know exactly what project I'd want us to do. Streamer support. Assembling and packaging away my streaming rig. Every team is ridiculous. A duct tape, a duct taping a webcam in front of a screen is a lousy hack. If I could just step right to the game and I don't no swipe card or something be streaming with the direct feed in seconds. Well, I, I can't think of a dozen streamers who just flock to our place to get a piece of that. Yeah! Actually, I know how we could do that. Uh, I could rig up a general purpose stalker board which... Words, Naomi. Which plays a man in the middle with the video feed, works with an RFID reader to get the streamer's info, ties into the central video encoder of the Wi-Fi network. Yeah, I can make that happen. And without damaging any classic hardware. Once more in English, please, I know software, not hardware. We stick a thing in the thingy and everything works just fine. I'm sure there's some legal and copyright issues to tackle, but if we can do it, let's be the world's first streaming arcade. I like that idea. Um, um, I was thinking, well, if the reason why all the games are considered the dead end is that they don't work in the ticket game uh, ecosystem, Lovely. why not add ticket output to normal games? We could... Reward skilled, we could reward skilled players with prize tickets based on their higher scores and speed of completion. With the right balancing, we could make old games just as desirable as new ones. Perhaps. As Naomi said, there may be some legal hurdles to clear, but I'm in favor of this idea. 
It's not that I love the prize games, I find them boring personally. You know, I favor pinball, but profit is the lifeblood of an arcade and prize games are profitable. If we can get Moopy producing tickets, well, that's somebody's nobody's ever done. Interesting, but as much as I love to do all three, I doubt we have the money or time to do that. Let's focus on one project to launch our arcade with. Okay. Branding is important, but branding doesn't feel like a thing that's on top of this. That's like basics. Um, we already said we're going into with the prize game, so that feels like a total add-up. So I think making arcade streaming a thing sounds fucking cool and weird. Um, and I think balances out well the, the very family-orientated thing and drags in the other players. Yeah, let's go with that. <coughs> Is anybody telling that I actually have a business degree? And that's how I'm thinking here? I want to be on the cutting edge of technology and the arcade community. Do whatever you have to do to integrate um, 20 something broadcast systems into our games. Finally, no hauling around a bunch of duct tape and webcams. A new tech project? I'm not just repaying an old monitor? Yeah, you won't regret this. Maybe I will. And one more thing. Final decision, the name. If it's going to be my baby, my arcade, my dream arcade, I've got a name, got a name already in mind for it. So, bearing any objections, I'd like to welcome all to. Jesus Christ. Um. Um. I'm so bad with names. I'm so fucking bad with names. Holy shit. How about the Sunflare Arcade? No, that's just my name in it. It's still an arcade. Sunflare sounds cool. Yeah, let's go with that. I'm not overthinking this. Yeah, that works. Sunflare Arcade. Let's call it Sunflare Arcade. Sunflare Arcade. I liked it. We can work with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. A toast. Yeah. I fetch my room temperature drink and raise mine in return. For those we've lost and those we've oh, man, man. Now let's get super drunk. Yeah, let's. That's a party, right? Let's get all blind drunk and celebrate. For, fl for some flare arcade in the future. Yeah, let's. If that's it. Oh god. It's been one and a half hours, and this was one level I hated. Losing everything and then getting it all back, and then some. It's been a roller coaster of a week, to be sure. But I can't rest now. Absolutely not. I need to take charge of this project and my life in general. I have to do it for them. I have to do for them what Francine did for us. That's okay. I'm ready. I'm willing. This is our time. Oh, Jesus Christ. You can let that was level 6. Holy shit. Yeah, level added. Reginald, honest. I got points. Shops in the volcano devastated city of Pompeii be the characteristics of a pizzeria. That's a neat and a bit depressing pizza fact just for you. Do you want to save? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, safety of the game, please. Oh god, oh, I'm so sorry, this will be the longest part ever. I don't really want to get through this. Let's go. Level 7. New game plus. Let's go. Whew. In a dis- yeah, we know. And for the first time I'm entirely in control of my destiny. And I'm no longer merely working in an arcade now, I'm working on my future. Which admittedly still involves working in an arcade, but still my future. I admit it feels weird. I'd grown so much, I'd grown so used to going with the flow, letting life better and bruise me, that having a true and honest hand on the controls is a bit terrifying. Everyone's counting on me to keep the flames of Miss Francine's funplex alive as we move in the era of Sunflare Arcade. And well, I'm super anxious. I'm nervous. Who wouldn't be? There's so much riding on the success of Sunflare Arcade. Not just the paycheck, but the hopes and dreams of all my friends. I can't forget about Queen Bee's hopes and dreams in particular. I'm not the only one anxious about it. The stress weighs heavily on both of us, and I don't want to let her down. I keep waiting for the universe to wake up and notice that I'm on a roll. If fickle fate would take away the fun flex, what could it do to Sunflare Arcade? I know that's hardly a constructive attitude you have, but... Anxiety is rarely a logical thing. You can know the truth while your nerves tell you something else entirely. Now all that's left 
is to get through opening day without incident. I arrived early in the morning to go over any last minute preparations and make sure everything is in order. Plus, Juniper was sick of watching me pace back and forth at home after breakfast. So she lovingly shoved me out of the apartment and told me to be productive. Now I stood in awe of the building, the dream I poured my heart and soul into. I still barely believe it myself. I paused for a moment to let the reality finally hit me and then step into my destiny. Damn. That's really cool. Pushing open the doors of Sunflare Arcana was greeted by relative peace and quiet. Just the beeps and boops and people moving about doing last minute preparations. We traveled a long and arduous road ever since the great... Baked event spirits. Kevin secured us a great rental space, an abandoned pizza place. Not the abandoned pizza place. With the all too familiar triangular roof. No else wanted it, but it didn't care about the funny shape. Quirk is in our favor. And I really couldn't have done all the renovations this place needed without the help of our financial benefactor. Hamza proved true to his word, fronting us as much money as we needed to make this happen. <clears throat> now we've got a family restaurant and arcade to rival Deco's palace. Five Nights at Sunflare Arcade. Well, okay, it's a very small compared to Deco's Palace, but quality over quantity. We went with the familiar layout. If it ain't broken and all that, that show that we still got the spirit and passion that made the fun plex great. But it's not all carbon copy. We've got a few new additions that Francine would have been proud of. The video wall is a nice touch that was... That one was my idea. It alternates between running music videos, game promos and high score leaderboards. We also repainted and did a general update on all the appliances and fixture to give it a more finished feel and less of a retired pizza place turned arcade vibe. I forgave a theory about structuring our redemption games to have more generous and player friendly payouts. He's confident in his number and I'm confident in his confidence. And there's no reason these games have to be carny scams. With the right balance we can provide fun and reward and reward the player at the same time. Of course this means writing a razor edge of math but we can do it. As for Tanvi's experiment into advanced streamer support, well, I'm unsure of how this will pan out, but she's confident in it, and such confidence is contagious. She's invited a few big name streamers to drop in on opening day and broadcast from our makeshift little studio. It'll build some bus for the arcade far and wide. All, from, all of my decisions, all of my choices made this. Made Sunflare Arcade what it is. So much labor and love went into the project from all of us now, and now that's all left to sufficiently open these doors. But before that fateful hour begins, I still have to do one last check on operations just in case. The restaurant side of this equation was proved to be very complicated. I'd go cross-eyed trying to pass the numbers on the side of the business. Hopefully it wouldn't drive us into bankruptcy, or the arcade wouldn't bankruptcy the restaurant or both at the same time. The great Hamza senses concern from his business partner. Perfection. Rest assured that Hamza has been uh, seen to all require requires seen to. Our delicacy shall ring true across taste spots across the city. I'm not sure I would consider burgers and buffalo wings as delicacies. Hamza is aware that we shall never earn five stars with our cuisine, but we shall be the pinnacle of deep fried foodstuffs. Today Hamza will oversee operations. Beyond this opening day, I'll leave you, you in the hands of my capable chefs and waitstaff. But you'll be in touch, right? I hate to see you have to chef uh, off to like Istanbul. <laughs> And suddenly everything's on fire. <laughs> no matter what corner of the globe Hamza's travels take him to, he can be summoned at the speed of light. Well, at the speed of L travel, really. And now back to my kitchen. Our glorious future together in business awaits. Hamza claps twice before leaving in a flourish. Okay, being partnered with Hamza is going to take some getting used to. Running a restaurant and an arcade is riskier than I thought it'd be. For all of his quirkiness, he knows business, right? He's rich. Rich people are smart, right? They're not. They're fucking not. After my quick check-in, I noticed the clock. It's unforgiving hands telling me it's not long now. Okay, breathe. Calm down. Everything's clearly under control. There's no need to freak out. You're just making excitement for terror. It, this is exciting. It's a happy day for the first day of Sun Claire Arcade. You can do this. You can do this. No, with all of us working together, we can do this. As long as no unforeseen problems pop up. I'm going, I'm going to be torn away from my compliances. I'm sure happy it's by the most loveliest of voices. I'm gladly turn my attention to Tanvi and I smile. I just finished making sure everyone's overlays are the perfection to this, um, this, and that the Sunflare case are played in play in between matches. 
Oh, that was a Not lot bad. of work. I didn't. I don't know how you managed everything, but you did. I have a moment. I want to show you something. My moment of chill is interrupted when I notice she's holding an envelope in her hands. Don't know what's in there, but immediately I get a bad feeling about this. I mean, who even uses the postal system anymore? Unless it's build, scam, or other bad news. So, I received a letter in the mail from the Four Heavenly Kings. Can you believe that? Who, who the fuck even uses snail mail anymore? I was thinking exactly that, minus the swears, of course. Anyway, that's not important. What important is opening this here with you. Like, right now? Right before grand opening? Yeah, is that a problem? I figured we could celebrate together. I'm sure they're sending me some sort of promotion or invite to some huge-ass tournament. You're celebrating opening day so we could join forces and commemorate our victories together. Except now is not the ideal time. I would love nothing more than enjoying a moment that is not constant... In, in this constantness that is uh, Sunfair Arcade where there are a million and one things I should be doing. I'm at a crossroads. Yeah, let's let's do this. Let, just one more. And to hack with it. The curiosity is killing me and I need to know what's in there. Can't wait any longer. Hurry up and open it. Yeah. Let's see what this baby has in store. Here we go. In one fell swoop, Tommy rips off the envelope and hastily removes the paper inside. She begins reading it out loud. It's been an honor having you follow the four heavenly kings. You already wrote so much. In turn, we've learned from you too. To further our knowledge, we think it will all be best if the kings and queen are under the same roof. Therefore, Queen B, we accordingly invite you to move into our team house. Tommy takes a moment to let the word sinks in. She's stunned, but eventually examined puts a lip into a grin. This is huge. And what does that mean exactly? Team house, what's that? All right, the team house is where all the members of the team, me and the rest of the 4HK, live together, play together, eat, drink together. Everything is done as a team. A pit squelts in my stomach and it reads all over my face. <laughs> oh, don't worry, it's not like we're, we're going... Yeah, there are separate bathrooms. The joke fails to light of the very serious situation at hand. So you'd have to move to wherever this house is located, right? And it's not in the city, let alone in the state, right? Noting, nothing to my dissatisfaction, Tanvi tries to simplify this. Yeah, but this is gonna boost my skills to the next level. All the most prominent winning FOD teams live together. It's the next step of my career. Fantastic! Trust me, this is fucking fantastic news. Is it? I let the words plummet from my mouth without hesitation and I see Tanvi's immediate frow I instantly regret it. Of course it is, why wouldn't it be? What about us, you know, us, you and me? Keeping a relationship going across state lines would be difficult, right? Can't exactly keep the romance alive through video chats and text messages. Excuse me? Since when did I agree to chain myself down? Holy shit. Have I not spent time and energy supporting you endlessly and making your dream come true with this arcade? Hey. Have I not cheered you on when you needed it? Hey. You can't even give me the same respect in return for my dream? Oh, that's not the point here. That is not the point, Tommy. If you can't... Wow. Maybe I should just go then. Wow! This is not what I wanted. My heart wrenches. But you moving would... It would mean... I wasn't ready for this. If Tawny leaves, I'll be all alone. Again. I want to respect her right to make her own choices. I just don't think I can let her walk right out of my life without trying to figure this out. I understand you've got aspirations and dream the same as I, and I admire that truly. Your passion inspires me even. But Tanvi, I've grown so attached to you, I can't see myself without you by my side. Is there some way we can make this work for us? Ah, uh. Look, that's touching and all, but really we haven't discussed in terms of this in terms of us yet, and there you are talking about being together forever. <laughs> Along with all that lovey-dovey bullshit. Remember, we talked about keeping this strictly label free i really don't feel comfortable with all this talk but i love you oh sh oh sh oh and that's the honest truth of it oh no even if we agreed to part ways i love her and she probably doesn't want to hear it but i couldn't help myself i could no longer fight those feelings <clears throat> I know we haven't really talked about this since the beach and maybe you feel entirely different, but ever since then I've grown deeper and more fond of you each and every passing day. Even if we aren't on equal footing on this, I can't stop what my heart is telling me. I have to speak true. 
I love you. Truly. And if saying it again make it more real, more concrete to her. Both of us went silent for a long pause, each looking away, embarrassed and upset. Feelings and emotions happening right now are culminating and discussing this any further here and now will make matters more complicated. And I still have to open the Sunflare Arcade. Listen, maybe we should take a few minutes to reflect and come back to talk about this after today is over, okay? Problem is that I have to open the doors like 50 minutes ago. The arcade is important to me too and I need to focus my attention on it for the moment. Fine. It's fine, I should be checking in the streamers anyway. We'll talk later, maybe. Lovely. Before I can apologize or other anything else, Tanvi dismisses herself from the conversation. And I'm starting to wish I'd burnt down the post office this morning. Can't handle this right now. As much as I want to stop everything and thought through this mess, I've got a job to do today. It will be time later to patch things up with Queen B, presumably. This game's getting depressing. Holy shit. I need to at least try to put this terminal behind me so I can focus on the first day of Sunflare Arcade with a smile. Despite reeling from that incident just now, despite my nerves, I'm ready to do this. Because I have to be ready. No choice. I've got big plans for the opening ceremony. I'm going to open the doors, give my prepared speech to the gathered masses, and stay on hand to greet gamers as they enter. Stepping to the front door, I grasp my two door handles and throw the gates to Sunflare Arcade wide. Behold! I give you... Oh shit, that's a stampede. I don't even have time to finish one line of my big dramatic speech. The crown spilled through the doors and runs right past me, eager to get through the games. Immediately, the arcades fill with the sound of beeps and poops, games starting up and people laughing with delight as they find their favorites. Well, there goes my entire open opening ceremony plans out the window. I held all sorts of stuff planned, but if folks just want to get gaming, where am I to argue? After a few minutes of final checks around the place, I decide to move into phase 2, meet and greets around the arcades. I walk the arcade like I did in my floor attendant Danes, talking with folks and making sure everything's running smoothly. Also, I should probably drag down Queen B2, assuming she wants to talk yet, which may not be the case. Sunflare Arcade is my domain, open to my explanation. Where should I visit first? Mm. No, why is shit... Yeah. Most of the time I'm drawn to showtime stage because of the flashing lights and if it beats, not because it's completely silent. No music at all. As I approach, I see Naomi furiously working on Fix It. Seeing the whole thing without tunes synced to its flashy lights rigs going is kind of depressing. And listening to Naomi mother as she works, she undoubtedly feels the same way. Oh, this was working fine earlier. Why is it working now? Ugh. Fortunately, Theo is proving surprisingly knowledgeable about the inner works of his favorite game. You may need to re-image the hard drive. I know some rare, rare websites where you can get a replacement copy of the files if needed. Okay. This is the third release of the version Showtime Stage Software, right? Those are, those are easier to come by than the modern fourth version, oddly enough. The files aren't the problem. I think the hard drive itself was damaged in shipping, and if so, well, you might not be able to dance so far today. I'd have to order a new part. I'm sorry, there must be so many gamers get up and running. Them, there were just so many games to get up and running. I must miss this ticking bomb of a hardware failure. Hey, it's cool. I don't need to get my grooves on all that time. Showtime Stage is one of our flagship games. It's flashy, it's exciting, and Teal's dance will bring a crowd in. Getting it working for opening day is a priority. <coughs> yeah, Teo, do you? Teo, Teo. If you know where we can get any files discreetly, what about the physical drive? Theo, do you know where could you know pill for one? Huh. As a Showtime Stage community manager, of course I cannot advocate third-party mods in an official Showtime Stage hardware. But I could probably hook you up with a few friends in town who develop their own homebrew replacement hardware. I bet I could wrangle up something that'll keep us rolling for a few days while Naomi orders a true replacement part from Corporate HQ in Japan. Yeah! Yeah, that'll work. I better dock... I bet I could dock the, to look official too, just in case. I'll make some calls, you can count on me. We have this running in an hour or two. Oh, thank God. So I'll take a bit of time and we get our stage back and work order. Good, good. Maybe we'll get through opening day without any major problems aside from this. Before I go, I spot a gamer who's been watching super curious about what's going on. Oh no. Hey, it's Showtime Stage really host. 
For now, yes, but we'll keep it fixed up as soon as we can. Oh man, I wanted to get my groove up. That's a bummer. You know, I might know a guy who's... I might know a guy who knows a guy who can get you a replacement super cheap. Or like any game you want, anything. As long as you know, ask too many questions. Um... No. N no. No. No reason to be mean or to lampshade what's likely meant to be an open invitation to do some crimes. I'm happy to see your enthusiasm for Sunflare Arcade, but I think we can handle this. Sorry that you can't play your favorite game right now, but it'll be fixed soon. The gamer shrugs it off, not too offended. School is cool, just figure that out by dick this place. It's got a little bit of everything I like. Just come back later to wow all the ladies with my hot style. <laughs> later. Oh god. That was odd. But as he fades back into the crowd, I decide to move on. Where should I visit next? The restaurant, actually. Let's let's go. That's not the, the the pink is a bit much, but okay. Seeing as we decided to open the new arcade and restaurant in time for the lunch rush, it was difficult to spot Gavin and Percy in the crowd. But I managed to find him having sandwiches and chatting. Tanked, completely tanked. Much obliged. I'm glad for your little tip. I was ready to invest a good chunk of, uh, of my pocket money in that company. All my hard work would have tanked right alongside it. This is par a powerful course where my siblings snatched up technology companies. It's a bump and dump in essence. I stir up excitement in the acquisition, then drop it once it goes cold. I've never seen one of their endeavors bear fruits for very long. Thanks for to their short attention spans. I'm glad I could save you the heartache. Apologies. Ah, uh, no offense. I think I can handle my accidentally heart-related puns without going into um, I can handle a few accidental heart-related puns without going into cardiac arrest, my good fellow. Hmm. But it's good to avoid a pothole on the road of finances, yes. All the better for those charity who eventually profit from my own loss. I approach them in what seems to be a natural lull in the conversation, although talk of finances is in itself quite a downer. So, stock market talk? Ah, oh, indeed. Indeed, I'd like to do my trades in the morning before I come to the arcade. Get it all bother over it so I can focus on Moopy. Afraid we're being soundedly boring at the moment, just two overly serious gentlemen talking about finance. Eh, that's fine. I'm adulting at 110% efficiently today. Having started a new business myself, I could probably learn about like how like money works. Oh, what would you like to know about? <laughs> yeah. I like to invest in our future, like long term, you know, surviving for many years to come rather than jumping at the easiest profit I can. Any tips? Uh, I find you to take. My own investments are preferably long term, yes. I make moment to moment trades, but they're stacked in the stability of the stock bedrock. Even after I'm gone, why do I get a finance lesson in this game? Holy shit. Um, even after I'm gone, I expect many of those to cash out gradually, and I've hired a phalanx of lawyers to carry out my wishes over the next oh, 30 years. Mm. Given how about I show you my portfolio, giving you some ideas for how to build up a nest egg for Sun Flare Arcade. Thank you. I'd be honored. I'll let you two handle the fine details. I choose to sink deeper and deeper into conversation about currency um, exchanges, fiscal policy, tax rate changes, and I start to lose consciousness. I admire their passion, but there's only so much adulting I can handle in one day, and I need to reserve some for later. <coughs> and then, it's then that I not notice Ray's voice at a nearby table. It's not really an altercation or an incident yet, but they're talking a bit louder than the others. Miss, I've run your credit card twice and it was declined twice. Man, that it sucks. Again, I'm telling you, it was working just fine early. I got tokens using it. See, see these tokens? Sensing an opportunity to provide actual customer service and further proof my adulting jobs, I step in to help. Ah, good morning, I'm the manager here. Can I be of some assistance? She looks awfully familiar. Have we met before? Oh, right, I invited her to check out my arcade, didn't I? Guess that's why she's What's here. What's up? Hey, good to see you. Love that you've done with the place. Just love it. We had something wrong with your credit card readers. My card's legit. I was using it earlier with no issues, but it's all messed up and stuff. Can you help me? I can pay cash if I gotta. I'm not trying to duck and run you, but I really prefer to use the card. You know what? We invited her and all that. Let's go. It's all but in day and I want to build customer loyalty. Best way to do this is to be unusually generous. I'll pick up the check for you so we can get having fun playing the games. My little way of saying thanks for visiting Sunflare Arcade today. Seriously, wow, thanks a bunch. Got a good feeling coming to this place, like I'd make a fine home away from home. That to say I was right, super glad. 
Okay, I'm off to get my game now. Another problem solved by Helia. I'm so good at this. With that matter settled, going back to wandering the arcade. Where to next? I'm sure I have to. Near the center of the arcade, Ashley's showing off her new cosplay to Queen Bee. Damn, that's so cool! Holy shit! She's been keeping it a total surprise from all of us, working secrets on it. Oh my god, we have, we have our own magical girl. Jesus. It seemed to be attracted the attention of a brand new customer, at least. I think I remember them from Deco's Palace, when I was getting some fries and someone was hogging the bartender's attention. Oh, hey, look, real, uh, real life in the wild near me. Hiya. Welcome to Sunfair Again, We're so happy to have each other who's opening today. Um, thank you, um... As much as I like to pull Queen B aside and talk things over with her, it's probably not best to air any dirty laundry in front of a customer. Just wait until this more opportune moment. Child, yes, you young one. I'll tell you what you told us. Uh, well, that I've never used a joystick before in my life. I, I mean, it's been mostly Deco's plays. I've played game on my phone, touchscreens and stuff. That's all. Never really been a, much of a gamer, but all the friends are here today, so I was figuring I might try one out. Wow. Never, never hold, once played it on a joystick. Can you believe it? Yeah, we've all been there. No point holding him out in it now. Oh, that's just too cute. Ought to be young and innocent again. And don't worry at all. Sunfair Arcade is the right place to learn. We're a friendly, inviting sort of arcade. No mad skills required. Here it's all about having fun. <laughs> uh, yes, you know what's super fun? Learning how to play Fist of Discomfort. Trust me. When I go a few rounds, I even spot you some tokens. Seeing Tanvi's con, Ashley quickly tries to offer something else. Nah. Or you could join me in a round or two of TMNT. Nothing like a friendly cooperative brawler game to ease you into things. Nope, no way. Best way to learn is to jump headfirst into the deep end, I say. No regrets, just smashing buttons and moving the joystick. And when you're starting with the hottest title, you've got a building community to learn from, right at your fingertips. But, but turtles, turtles who are ninjas. Um... Looks like I need to jump in and persuade this kid to choose a game. They look like a deer trapped in the headlights, stuck in the crossfire. You know what? Yeah, that's it is the right call. No guts, no glory. Fist of Discomfort is the heart of any arcade scene, and there's no better teacher than Queen Bee of the Four Heavenly Kings. On cue, Tani strikes a pose. Yeah. You will become my young apprentice, Ashe Nehu Darth Newbie. Hey, go easy on the kid. Yeah, he, you're, they're not ever dear. Yeah, yeah, I promise not to whip them too badly. Come on, let's show you the ropes. The ropes? There are ropes and waft of cheese. Ah. And gone. There goes my chance to talk with Tanvi, although not sure she wanted to talk with me right now anyway. Not a time for chance. That poor, poor newbie. Oh my! Oh my, this is gonna be brutal. Also, super fun to watch, like Gall Gallagher smashing watermelons. I'm going to watch the slot and then wander the floor doing the good old meeting read. Uh, uh, tending to the floor just like the old days. It's good for the manager to be out and about on the opening day, right? That's the spirit. See you out there. Time for me to move on. Before I can continue my wanderings, Gavin pops up directly in my bath. Stop whatever you're doing and look towards the door without making it look like you're looking for anyone in specific. Uh, what? Okay, I'm pretending not to be looking for... Mrs. Jean Fame. I have no idea who that is. The top arcade critic in the city. Your reviews can make or break an arcade easily. I don't think she'd be coming today as normally some little independent arcade is beneath her interest, but apparently she's made an exception. Now, if we don't want to end up smeared across every website she writes for, I suggest you go play nice and show her all the positives of some Flair Arcade. I'm on it. Best foot forward. She's the redhead near the entrance with the handbag. Best of luck. I spot her, easily spot her, thanks to Gavin's cues. Considering this morning lacked the usual chaos I experienced on my first day at the Funplex, I'd say we're off to a great start. I'm sure this reviewer will appreciate this. Wearing my most professional smile, I stroll over to the entrance. You. I remember you are sh fucking not her. Oh no. Oh no. My dear, what before George had a miserable time in your arcade at that birthday party? You just stood back and let that horrible woman say terrible things about me. Well, this arcade was fun while it lasted. Might as well burn all down to ashes, build a new arcade on those ashes 100 years from now after this blows over. Before I can try to defend myself, she holds up a hand to stop me. 
Now, while I seriously question the wisdom of allowing you to run an arcade and would love nothing more than to give you zero stars and walk away immediately, I'm unfortunately committed by ethical standards to say and properly review our establishment in a relatively unbiased fashion. So as unpleasant as this may be for both of us, uh, I suggest we remain professional, even if you've dug yourself a deep hole to climb out in my view. Understood? Even if I want to go and uh, try to chew her out, I've got to think of the arcade. This isn't some random angry parent, not this time. It feels like chewing ground glass, but I need to swallow my pride on this. Understood. Excellent. What I need from you now is stay out of my way. No special treatment or consideration. I need to observe your arcade as a as a disinter, disinter, disinterested outside party so I can shut your facility and atmosphere. But rest assured, if I see some egregious mistake, I will bring it to your attention, pointedly. My readers likewise will become very aware of your shortcomings. I do my best to support consumer activism, and that requires absolute honesty of any difficulties I observe. So, until such time as I require we, I suggest we speak no further. Agreed? Sure, fine. As you were then. Wonderful, just wonderful. Not only does she hate us right off the bat, but I can't even leap to the defense of what we've built here without antagonizing her further. I may need to talk to Gavin about how to save the Sunware Flayed from an, in an inevitable negative review. Nothing else I can do now but pray for the arcade gods that everything from here um, on out goes perfectly. Once again, I wander the floor, but this time, while it's all smiles and penetry on the outside, I'm left all alone battling my thoughts. This is certainly not helping my anxiety, mind you. Being under a magnifying glass means anything that can go wrong will go wrong in spectacular fashion reported on across every arcade enthusiast website in existence. Nope, wait, stop, bad thinking, don't assume things will go wrong. Besides, the morning wasn't too eventful, who's to say the afternoon will be a disaster? Uh, I say. Because writing. And then the afternoon was a disaster. See, I've told it. I knew I had spoken too soon the second I saw Gavin approaching me with a ting of furry furring his brow. Utterly ridiculous. It shouldn't be possible for us to be out of nachos in the vending machine that fast, but uh, yet here we are. I have received for ordering exactly enough to fill them up, and yet there are only a few bags in there. A misdelivery, perhaps? And that was the least of our problems. If we've got an electrical problem. Three of the retro games have shorted it out. I don't understand. I tested the power supplies outright, rebuilt a few of them. Unless someone's seriously scuffing their sneakers and shocking the coin boxes, we're talking a failure somewhere in our electrical wiring. Calamity of the catastrophe. They just keep piling up. What? All of the toilets have stopped working. All of them. You need to call a plumber fast and not the one that jumps on turtles. Anxiety rising. What are we gonna do? Hmm. This doesn't make any I, sense. Uh, I'm freaking uh, out. I'll admit it. Well. I'm freaking out. Maybe we should close down for the day, iron out the wrinkles, try again tomorrow. We're hastily losing our grip on things, and I, if I don't say anything, when well, we might, we might as well call it Chris. I must refocus our energy. Okay. Nope. No way. We're not giving in just because of a few bucks in the system. We are the Funplex expatriates, the proud crew of Sunflare Arcade. Did we give up on the deco same uh, came knocking? Hell no, and we aren't giving up now. I want to hear some solutions. Talk to me. Ashley. The group exchanges nervous glances, then thankfully stops to breathe and think. Mm -hmm. I will become the plumber we need. I mean, not exactly, but I'll grab a plunge and do what I can. We have to close down the bathrooms for now, but I'm sure we can convince one of our neighbors to loan us theirs, maybe? I'll check next door with them before I go to battle with our demonically possessed toilets. Um. And while I'd say this vending machine issue is human error, I have enough faith in my own error checking to say this human is not responsible. I make some calls with our distributors and see where the chain broke down. But also also see about ordering some quick replacement stock. Mm. Mine's a bit more complex. I need to replace the fire, um, power supplies, but I can do that. I can do most of those today. Meanwhile, I put out a feeler out of the, uh, in the arcade community online, see if we can get an electrician with arcade experience out here quickly. I've been meaning to get back into online groups, and even if that means popping my head in, popping my head up in a crowd, I'll do it. Okay, good solutions, people. Good solutions. I won't be able to work the floor while I'm, while I'm taking a restaurant here. Are you good a cow ring for me? Things seem to be getting more intense as the day picks up. 
You three focus on your task at hand. I may be at bit the boss, but I was a floor attendant originally. I can handle whatever sun flare arcade throws at me. Got it? Gotcha. But I'm changing out of this first. I don't want to get poop water all over my new ma our new mascot. Toodles. Have on it. You can count on me. Sure, great guys. Will. If all of three busy, that leaves me in charge of every problem that may emerge for the rest of the afternoon. No way to tap out with someone to help me with those situations. I need to work fast to hit every problem before it's too late. Can't leave any stones unturned this time. No risk of letting something spiral out of control. But I'm ready. I mean, I have to be. No choice. Feeling freshly invigorated, I start my floor track. There are problems all around me. What should I tackle first? This is, uh, that feels not completely like a problem, but, uh, yeah, let's do this first. Are you fucking kidding me? Tell me, Castle, but glares at someone who's about to play the idle fist of the Skullfight machine she's guarding, dissuading them, and looks down on the fold again, frantically keying in commands. Right, that sorted out. What's going on? What the f Some asshole tried to hijack my streaming account. I don't get it. Naomi and I put together those dicky mini computers to stream game videos ourselves. I made the security recommendations myself to avoid this sort of thing, but it looks like our new experimental tech to allow celebs like me to walk on top of the game and start streaming. It has a few holes. I stepped away from a few minutes to hit the bathroom, which is a disaster zone, by the way. I got an alert on my phone that someone tried in to log into my account. They didn't count on my two-factor authentication, at least. I'll admit I'm not silicone literate enough to know how the streaming rig these two came up with works. I just allocated some R&D funding for them to make it happen. The specifics are beyond me. Apparently, Trouble drones are the intention of overwatchful Mr. Fame. Wonderful. Okay, Naomi's busy fixing up power supplies, but grab her and ask her to turn off the streaming add on for now, just until we sort this out. Great, just great. Today couldn't be worse for you and me, could it? Let's just get it on with and solve the problem directly in front of us. With Naomi busy and Ashley betting toilets have only one op option to turn to for technological assistance. Iris, can you check the security camera footage? See who messed with the fist of this comfort machine while Queen Bee wasn't looking. Maybe that'll help. Iris, online. Already on it. I've been analyzing the video feeds ever since she mentioned hacking was afoot. Nobody hacks my friends and gets away with it. Oh, Iris. It looks like the next person to approach the machine was a tall man with blue sunglasses. You think he did it? He accessed the USB slot streamers used to lock in for a new tag, but wasn't streaming anything or even playing. He just plugged in a small device, faded, and then left. From the access log, I'd say he's our culprit. I'm on it, thanks, Iris. Can we talk about that they all have the same weird ghost symbol on their jackets and there might be a connection? Ooh. Doesn't take long to track the guy down. For starters, there is, there's this rather unique fashion sense. Also, he's plugging into another of our four stream-friendly games without playing it. That's an extremely obvious tell. Kind of hard to give him benefit of the doubt or even a second chance. He clearly broke the rules of the arcade. Although he looks like that's a sort who could break me if I break the news to him badly. I should choose my words wisely. One that involves me staying in one piece. Yeah, yeah. Plain and simple. Let's be honest with you, shall we? I'm the manager here and I know damn well what you've been up to. Immediately he straightens up, pocketing the item he was committing arcade crimes with, all nonchalant-like. Well, I was doing nothing. Yes, yes you were, and I know in fact exactly what you were doing. And if you continue doing this, I'm calling the police. This is the second chance, a weird one, and I suggest you take it. There will not be a third, understand? And with that he growls a little, ready to protest his innocence, before holding himself back. Lucky I'm under orders, Nerdo. Fine, whatever you want. And he walks out off into the crowd without another word. I'm left in a state of confusion as our exchange, but I'll take it hesitantly. Iris? Yeah, I'll keep an eye on him through the security video feeds. Don't worry, I'll let you know if he resorts to his nefarious ways. I'll handle them without causing an incident. Also, I'm vague on what he meant by orders exactly. With that in the bag, I quickly look around to see if there are any others nearby problems I can address. As I hear the clang and bang of someone assaulting a cabinet, I see Percy holding up a finger to grab my attention. I motion for him to join me and he does. 
Thank goodness, I tried to grab Ashley, but she was in a hurry branching a plunger like it was some sort. Um, there's so much going on right now. What's happening? Some hooligans working this way down the retro games, yelling at them and smacking around the joystick like they're speed bags. I swear he was going to knock over a joust. That's how hard he was shoving that cabinet. Perhaps uh, pe people have been, uh, been avoiding going near him ever since he started raging. It's, it's causing quite a scene. I'll take care of it, Percy. Thanks. <laughs> Be careful, love. I don't think the looks. I don't like the looks of this one. He places a hand on my shoulder in solidarity before leaving. This happens more often than you think. Someone getting mad at a game and then they start smacking the cabinet around. Unlike pinball which will go into tilt mode to punish you. Uh, the only justice to be found is here is my justice and the arcade law. You fucking piece of shit game. Totally jumped over that fucking barrels, fucking monkey. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Even if, well, I'm not a little less than eager to bring the law down on this guy. I'm in awe of the size of this, of this lad. He's probably eats six whole lambs for breakfast and bench presses pickup trucks for fun. <laughs> But I know my duty, I know what I must do. Right, you're done. Get out of my arcade, we're finished here. Excuse me, you, did I hear that right? Oh god, it's just what I needed from now. From the corner of my eyes, what missed fame watching. But I'm standing firm. You heard me, I'm the manager here and I reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. So bounce your ass out of the door before I have it bounced out by the cops. You little... But oddly, his attention is diverting to something or someone behind me. It's only for a couple of seconds, but his old demeanor changes after that. Fine. He storms off, de deciding uh, he'd rather have the last word than argue it further. I turn to see who or what exactly changed his mind with the sharp plans, but the crowd's too thick. Whoever or whatever, it is gone now. And Mr. Faines turns to the crowd without a comment, hopefully quietly approving of my law bringing. That was odd, but I guess a win is a win. Now then, the Bunnies. Sure. The Red Hood television based on video based video wall was an idea I came up doing renovations. Naomi runs the whole thing of a cheap mini computer too. Practical and expensive and it gives us just perfect amount of flair. And I've been pretty proud of it up until this moment. For some reason it's showing nature documentary about cute fluffy bunnies instead of retro music videos in arcade high scores. Not that bunnies are a bad thing necessarily, there are so many weird things I could be playing, but it's still not playing what I wanted to play. Something to miss. As I'm hunting around for the remote control we keep at the price tag, KO approaches. Bunnies, huh? Yep, bunnies. Interesting choice. Not my choice, Teo. I'll have, I'll have it fixed in a moment. Okay, cool. I was just wondering if we suddenly experienced with a paradigm shift in arcane theming or something. The bunnies are really cute, though. Grabbing the remote, I flick back to the channel 3, which should take the video feed from Naomi's system, and it flips back to the bunnies on channel 5 for a few, sec a few seconds later. The systems are in there, almost like the rabbit themselves. So I click back to channel 3, and nope, once again it reverts back to 5. Okay, clearly we're dealing with a master hacker, one who can modify his Naomi's system despite having no physical access to it. An individual capable of truly hacking the planet. Yeah. Or it's a prankster with a universal TV remote. I've got one of those myself. It helps me turn off overly loud TVs and bars which start out the beats of whatever game I'm playing. Smart tale. Not that I would ever do that, mind you, just in case. But with great power comes great responsibility and clearly who's ever forcing us to watch this lacks the ladder. How about I suddenly go suddenly check the crowd to see if anybody got a clear line of sight and is pointing a gadget at the video wall each time you change it? I'm strapped for help, so I'm not going to deny Teo's offer. Sure, go for it. The war for remote control continues for another minute back and forth from music videos to documentary about the rabbits. And now it's showing them mating, which I'm seriously hoping does not count as pornography or yet I'll have another black mark against us with a certain arcade critic. It's been only a few minutes, but I can feel it feels like an eternity of copulating Lego, Lego morphs before Teo returns. Found an orange jacket standing near the pinball section. Thanks, Theo. No worries, anything for you. Ugh. I roll up the sleeves of my hoodie, ready to put an end to this. Wait a minute, isn't that the arcade newbie from earlier? They didn't seem like a troublemaker at the time. What's going on here? Oh, it's definitely the kid. I can see the tiny plastic gasset in his hand briefly before they pocket it. 
Perhaps noticing my approved, the teenager strolls, rolls stealth and gets a natural one, resulting in an awkward and obvious attempt to looking like an unimportant part of the crowd. Hey, didn't know anything. I mean, uh, hi, good to see you again. What's up? How are things? Giving this little bundle of nervousness. I'm not sure I feel like coming down on like a ton of brings on the crew kit, but rules are rules, right? What's up, dog? Have huh, what? Okay, friend, bad bunnies are cute and everything, but stop messing with my video wall. I don't want to have to kick you out of here. Got it? Um, okay, sorry. Wasn't trying to cause trouble. I mean, I mean, I was, but never mind. Okay, I'll stop. Thank you, bye. Ah, they're gone, slipping back into the crowd. That was weird. What's going on here? I decided to look a bit more, hoping for some clues. What trouble should I investigate next? Before I can continue my quest to purge my arcade of evildoers, I'm interrupted by an onslaught of my hardworking staff. Hmm. I knew it. I knew it about our missing inventory. Oh. When I get my hands on whoever this is, I found the electrical problem. Sabotage, sabotage and treason. An enemy agent walks among us. Okay, so we have some insight to what's causing all these messes, but it's a ch chaotic jumble right now. One at a time, please. I was essentially no snack and Tori was indeed not human error. The liberty truck never arrived here. It was routed to a garbage dump due to computer error. As expect Malfessence? And Malfessence explains our electrical problem too. Remember my joke about someone scuffing their feet and shocking the coin boxes? Nope, that's actually what happens. An external job, not a grid failure. Someone's got a battery or something to shock prod and was using it to crash games. It must be the same person who flushed a bunch of wetted up paper towels and firecrackers down the toilets. It's a war zone in there. I was able to dredge out uh, one super gross chunk of it, but we need a professional plumber to get the rest. This is all sounding way too suspicious to be random acts of hooliganism, and it also ties into what I've been handing on the floor. Hmm. I've had to deal with pranksters all afternoon, too. I've had to kick a few of them out the door. I've been so pleasant playing firefighter, running from blaze to blaze with a leaky bucket that I haven't been able to put the pieces together. And now it's clear, I know what I must do. Uh, yeah, we kick ass. Right, that's the tears. There's no more Miss Nice. The, the, the gloves are off. But aren't you wearing any gloves? Do you want to borrow mine so you can take them off? Ashley, focus. So you have an idea of who's responsible? Yeah, leave that to me. I've come to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm out of, all, all out of gum. Oh, here, have some of mine. Actually, hands me a stick of gum. With a surge, I pop it in my mouth, turn my heel, and march off to resume ass kicking anyway. <coughs> and with a lot of solidarity, all of us split up, each on our own mission, to toward the near do wells. I'm not particularly thrilled to begin this con uh, confrontation. My nerves haven't stopped jangling since this morning. Oh well. My friends are counting on me to lead, to be the responsible one. I can't foist this off to Gavin like I might have done at Farplex. Finding my quarry isn't particularly difficult. She's been in the background the whole time, watching and waiting as I ran around trying to put a lid on the mayhem. Her eyes study me as I approach, grinning ear to ear. Hiya! Hi! Hello there! Figured it out, huh? Yeah, I can't say I understand the why, but at least I know the who. Matching fashion style was a Pretty big clue. I guess a formal introduction's in order. Yeah, okay. The name's Sue. Natural born leader, hacker extraordinaire, and leader of the Ghost Monsters, the hottest gang on these streets. Really, any call yourself Ghost Monsters? Nice to meet ya. She playfully curtsies, her wicked smile never ceasing. And yeah, I guess my friends were a little wild and crazy, leaning a bit heavy on the pranks. And okay, you booted some of us out. Not all, just some. That's cool. I mean, it's your house and your rules. You're the sheriff here and you lay down the law. And I respect that. Let me make it up to you, okay? Sue steps back and taps a button on her smartwatch. I like that they're just copy-paste. That's so funny. And from the crowd of gamers, her whole gang, gang examples. Even the ones I told to get lost. Gang, this is... What's your name again? Miss Centric. Gang, this is here. Here, this is Inky, Blinky, Pinky, and Clyde. It's... <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh, that's a... Yeah, yeah. Now then, she turns her face to the ghost monsters. 
You're all very, very naughty, and I'd say sh she'd owe an apology. A big fat I'm sorry for me to you, don't you agree? Each of them mumbles a semi-coherent, semi-sincere apology. Yeah, whatever, sorry. Really sorry. Gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry. When they finish, Sue faces me once there. again. There. Everybody's sorry, which means everybody's forgiven. Correct? Because, and this is me being real with you, I like this arcade. I really do. It beats the crap out of Deco's palace, that's for sure. I can easily see this being our new home, you know? I admire what you've done with the place. It's totally mm -hmm. awesome, and I'm really looking forward to coming back. Again and again. I definitely don't want to end our first day here on a sour note. No, no. I'm so glad we can communicate like adults. Apologize for being naughty and move on. Now, okay, we may still ruffle a few feathers while we're here, but that's cool, right? I'm sure you understand that it's all fun and games. Nothing personal. So what do you say, friend? All's forgiven. The fucking audacity. Like what? I paused taking in everything Sue rambled on about. Let me get this straight. You scare our customers, mess with our television set, smash up and short circuit our games, clock our toilets, redirect our mail orders, come back here after I explicitly told you to get lost, try to hijack Queen Bee's streaming account, and you want me to smile and let you come back tomorrow? My words barely face her, that grin still lingering. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. I love this arcade and I think we could be great friends. What you say, partner? Waiting for my response, she holds out a fist bump. <clears throat> Look, I'm sure you're all good kids at heart, but if I let you hang around here and you just cause more problems, it's not good for any of us. If you sincerely love Sunflare Arcade, you understand I can't let you ruffle feathers as you put it. I need to make it sure everyone's having a good time. Well, yeah, I mean, I get that, right? So I might be willing to offer you another chance if you promise me you follow the rules from now on. That's the best I can do, okay? No helping it. Oh, well, I'd, I'd like to work with you here, really, but I prom but promise is kind of a steep ask. Something's wrong. I'm, pretty, I'm a pretty em empathetic sort of gal. I can tell when someone's being legit with me. And she's clearly genuine about wanting to come back, but seems conflicted. How hard is it not to hack machines and run wild? What would be the problem? Okay, see, normally I'd give you my word. Words bond, but well... No ifs, ands, or bots. I need your word if I'm going to rebuild trust with you. We don't need to have to get the police involved here. We can keep this between us, right? Sue raises an eyebrow at that. Whoa, put the brakes on! Bad idea, friend. Really bad idea. You don't want to even think about getting the cops involved in this. No, no. Because... And this is me being honest with you, because we're on such good terms. It won't do you any good. We'll be out and back on the streets within a day. I've... We've got friends in high places. We don't sell drugs or weapons. We sell information. And information, as a currency, is far more valuable than what other gangs trade in. So if we're doing this, we don't involve the pigs. Any problems? You come to me direct. That's my rule. Break that rule. And, well, you don't want to see what I can do with the push of a single button. So now you're threatening me. I'm just telling you how it is. What you do now is entirely up to you. Before she can continue her direct, we rather rudely interrupted. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oi, Sue, the hell you think you're doing here? And the thick tension that surrounds us melts away, redirected to the new challenger. All eyes clear towards them. Oh, great. Okay, Helia, hold, hold that thought. I got business to attend to. And they're right, you do. Ghost Monsters don't operate south on the 23rd Street. You know, that, you know this is lovely chainsaw territory. Get lost or get tossed. Um, if I wasn't confused before, I'm sure as heck am now. All I can do is watch this unfold before me. With a clap, Sue summons her buddies to her side. I'm sorry, Salva, what? I don't recall signing any non-compete agreements with you, darling. Ghost monsters for life! Oh, ghost monsters. This locker room gossip queen is disrespecting our fearless leader. What do we say to that? Nobody disses Sue on my watch. Nobody. 
Yeah, they did scatter that to the chick. I'm an equal opportunity socially maladjusted. <laughs> That is a sentence. I think you've got your answer, ladies. Now and then, let's ro- No. No, God. Well, to their credit, they didn't throw the first punch, but we're talking. Han did not shoot first levels of moral high ground there. Immediately, the ghost monsters in the lovely chains are at each other's throat, grappling, punching, shoving each other. A baseball get gets swung and clanks off of the side of a racing game. The soda cans are thrown, someone uproots a chair near the snack machine, and that goes flying too. It's chaos. Complete and utter chaos. And it needs to stop now. Iris? Already calling the cops. As for me, it's funny when you start out the day anxious about what the future may bring. Once that future goes completely to poop, well, that anxiety just fades away. There's something oddly freeing about seeing your world crumble around you. There's nothing left to fear. And that means I can swing into action, ready to face it. Priority run, get the customers he out of hell. Over here. Gavin and Ashley are already on that. I join in trying to funnel and panic crowd of kids and gamers out of the door and away from the carnage. This way, this way, hurry. In orderly fashion, please. Out, everybody, out! The fight spills into the restaurant area, fortunately well after anybody eating there and had bailed on the, pal on the place. This just adds greasy french fries to the mix of crap being thrown through the air on the opposing sides of this gang war. Damn it. Not letting that shit get, get away with this. Until now, it's been the worst sloppiest bar room raw. Teenagers flaying at each other wildly, generally wrecking the scene off, uh, rather than each other. But now, she's pulled out a gun. Not some arcade light gun, but a real life shooting and killing gun. This is, this isn't happening. This cannot be happening. But this is 100% happening. The leader of the Lofty Chainsaw raises her weapon and takes aim at trying to end this. But the target is conveniently tucked behind Mrs. Fame and Tail. And if I don't do something, someone is going to get seriously hurt. My mind races. Calm acceptance washes over me. This is how things will be. No helping it. One chance to do something good in the midst of all this chaos. Time slows for me like I've trembled in the dream state. Pure instinct take over and I start running towards them. Jesus, really? I, I mean, protect Sue, right? Like, that's the one she's aiming at, and... Oh, I get, I get tea and... Ah! That's good. My, my voice fucks me up, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry for the interruption, I got just... Oh, sage tea. Uh, uh, honey. Honey. Stops for, for my throat and something new to drink. It's very... Ah, perfect. The dramatic timing of that. Whoa. Holy shit, what did you... I was aiming for Sue. Pigs, pigs, run for it. Stay cool, stay cool and wipe the footage first, do it. Stay with us, stay with us. Help. Did, I, did I get shot? Is that what happened? Did I get shot? <coughs> I just wanted to make a dream for everyone to enjoy. That's all. Was that so wrong? Is, is what you would have done. It's what you did too for all of us. I guess there's no good deeds can't go punish. Family curse. You've a strong spirit, dear. You'll get through this. I know you will. But for now, oh, you'd best wake up. Am I, am I dying? There's still more to be done. That was unnecessarily dramatic. Slope, very slowly I open my eyes. The soft beeping of medical monitoring greets me, as well as an angel in white. Well, an angel in a white lab coat. While they're no heavenly being, they do appear to be my doctor, armed with nothing more than a clipboard. I'm still a bit hazy as they briefly explain the situation. Thanks to my wild theatrics, I startled the shooter enough that her bullet missed its intended target. Instead, it went into my leg. Which hurts like hell, but apparently resulted in a surprisingly clean shot that I recovered from in a few weeks easily. Today's in the hospital, we got two on crutches, some limping, and then I'll be back to 100%. And more importantly, nobody died. I can live with just momentary pain if someone else gets to live, period. So, could have been better, could have been worse. 
The doctor, having given me the report, leaves to treat the other patients. But before they do, they inform me I have a visitor. At least that's a plus side. I just wonder who it is. Is it Queen Bee? Yeah! Tanvi storms into the room and proceeds to stand before me. Her arms are crossed defensively and her brow furrows. She's invisibly upset. I have a feeling like I'm about to get re-aimed for what I did. I I'd admit maybe it wasn't a smart thing jumping in front of a bullet, but I can't undo it now. I'm prepared for the consequences as I praise for, praise for impact. You dumb You... You just... Her words falter as she tries her best to keep her composure. Her frown softens. You had me so worried. I'm sorry. Tears roll down her cheeks and she immediately wipes them away. Don't do anything that stupid ever again. Seriously, I, I can't believe you jumped in front of a bullet. You realize you aren't some action hero, right? That brings a smile to my face. Yeah, the harsh realization is setting in. And I promise I won't do it ever again. Swear to me. I swear. I swear I won't get shot again. Tommy's defensive scent melts away and her body relaxes as she sighs. Good. Because cause I can't bear the thought of losing you. I just couldn't imagine my life without you. She pauses, biting her lower lip. She averts her eyes, her cheeks flushing red. Fuck, I, I love, love you. I oh. love you. A lot. I, I like that I get it with swearing. That's so much better. So there. Now you know. Good. Thanks, we finally had that conversation. Even though my leg is throwing, my heart skips a beat before I can respond. <sighs> Hearing her mirror my sentiments from earlier, I couldn't help but smile. I love you too. More than words can begin to describe. Care for you deeply, passionately, and intrinsically. I've never loved anyone as much as I love you. You're my everything. Oh, Couldn't bear the thought of losing you either, which is why I feel so upset earlier and let it get the better of me. Honestly, I should have taken the time to talk to you in a more collected manner, and for that I apologize. Yeah, it wasn't perfect. I wasn't perfect at discovering it either. And I'm a fool thinking that it took me almost losing you to be able to share my feelings for you. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, but it's also dramatic and a trope and I like it. Commitment and devotion have always scared me. I've been burned hard in the past and have closed myself off from those emotions. I didn't want to get hurt again, but with you, everything just, just feels right. Oh, yes, it does feel right, doesn't it? Seeing you injured made me realize that I didn't want to be without you. And so, while you're recovering, I made a few calls. Talked to the demon and the other heavenly kings. Oh? I still want to be able to live in a team house. That's my dream and I can't give, give that up. But being with you is also my dream, so I was able to find a solution. <laughs> Get this? Two houses. Obviously, they aren't going to demolish the house that they have now over in Japan, but we decided to open a secondary house. Here. In this city. Oh. So how exactly will that work? Will they move over here then? Nope. No way. No, not a chance. They can't all uproot and leave what they have. It's just like how I don't want to abandon what I have here. Instead, they put me in charge of compiling my own team for a year in the States. A full branch of 4HK. I'll be scooping out hot talent and inviting them here to play with me. Granted, I'm still going to take trips to visit, study and play abroad with the rest of the kings. But this way, I don't have to leave forever. That's... Can I move into the house? I pinch myself to make sure this is 100% real and it hurts. Not as bad as my leg currently, but enough to know I'm awake. You seriously found the best of both worlds thing. That's great, I'm so happy for you. I'm happy for me too. This was the best possible outcome, more than I could have imagined. Dare I ask what the other outcomes you imagined? Oh, most of the Samaritan told me living alone with ten cats. You know, really getting into that cat person life. I allow us two cats at most. I'm just glad that you're on board with all of this. Of course I am, Tanmi. You mean so much to me. And y you to me, and I'm excited to start this new adventure with you. Oh, this is so adorable. Tanmi steps in closer to where I'm laying, leans in and kisses me gingerly. My whole body melts as warm spread over my entire body. Hey, thanks. Thanks. Thank you for listening to me. You're the best, truly. 
Now get some fucking rest, I'm out. I wish desperately to get out of this bed and follow her, but with this lag there's no chance of that. So I'm left pining. Seeing the person I care for the most was certainly a boon to my spirit. Now, if they could only do something about the food here. With my heart calm, my body finally tells me it's exhausted. I snuggle into the covers as a yawn escapes me. Just as I'm about to roll over and drift over to sleep, another visitor drops in. It's likely well past visiting hours, but with no small amount of dread and relief, I'm glad to see her. A word, if you will. I try to straighten myself up from the pillow backrest, time to put up my professional front even if I'm in excru excruciating pain. Okay, sorry, I start by explaining of what happened today isn't excessively in indicative of... I sure hope it was. It's hard to disguise the disbelief on my face. What? It seems like I misjudged your character based on that initial unpleasant interaction, but what I saw today, clearly you are no fool nor a coward. I let my need to protect my family override my better judgement. How absurd to paint everything you've built at Sunflare Arcade with that brush all over such a small matter. I saw you selflessly throw yourself in front of that bullet. You didn't have to do that, you chose to do that. It's indicative of someone who isn't simply in this for the money, as so many on this industry are. While I'm uns uncertain why you protected that young criminal, uh, I suppose someone who respects life deeply enough to even protect someone like her is to be respected. I suppose I've come, a, I've become a bit jaded from all those eager to cash in uh, on the arcade scene. All the larger scale arcades I have to review tend to be very impersonal and cold. So you were impressed with our arcade? Well, it's let's not go that far. I can say I was thrilled about the amount of mayhem and disaster going on before gang war broke out, but I will say I've only seen that amount of mayhem and disaster once before. It's highly unusual to say the least. The last time I reviewed a small and upcoming arcade similar to yours, everything went wrong. Everything. I wrote my review in an honest fashion as a result of my scathing pan, the place, the place was sold and closed down within a month. Sold to a notable figure in the industry. Wait, don't, you don't mean... Yes, the Konami. Such is the fate of any arcade which dares to stand up to him. Your prior business, the fun place, only escaped being devoured by being far too small to be worthwhile. Sadly, your enthusiasm may put uh, put it in his crosshair, and if you cannot tidy up your reputation after today's affairs, Sunflare Arcade will be next. Again and again and again. Thrown down by Dekonami. This time he didn't have to lift a finger. By pure coincidence, the mon ghost monsters wrecked everything before he could exact any revenge. All he has to do is swoop in and buy out what's left of our dreams. However, I came to a decision. Given it was a first-hand witness to all your trouble, which are clearly not your fault, and given your willingness to put even your own life on the line for your arcade, I'm going to tell my editor I need more time, that what I want to return in one week to get a more accurate and mature overview of your operation. One week, that's the best I can offer. This is a difficult home to climb out, even aside from earlier trouble, having a gang fight and a shooting transpired at an arcade, well, the press will feed on this. Even if I was the only press present and accounted for, they dig and they speculate and they chew on your bones. If your arcade survives the initial onslaught, I hope to write a proper review which can lay those concerns to rest. But I offer you no more second chances, no more reasonable doubts. Best foot forward when I return, or my reader will know the truth. Understand? Understood. Then I'll leave you to your re recuperation. With a court note, she turns and leaves the room, leaving me with my thoughts. One week. I've got exactly one week to completely rebuild our reputation and clear the good name of Sunflare Arcade. Otherwise, it's game over. For all of us. Ain't no pressure. What the fuck this, this, this game took? Turns! Oh my god, we're <coughs> already two, over two and a half hours in and oh god. You proved to be a gently sweet, yeah, fuck, yeah, I got points, lovely. One last pizza effect. 36% of Americans prefer meat toppings on their pizza, while 38 prefer vegetarian. Everybody loves different kind of pizzas and that's a beautiful thing. The final level! Yeah, save the game. Holy shit, I'm, I'm so done with everything. Oh god, just one level left and then we're done. And then we're done with this game. Oh my god. Oh. It's so good, but it's so much. Holy shit. Mm. 
Illscreen. Lovely. That's a good name for a, for a final level. <coughs> oh, let's go, gamers. It's a distant future's end, and oh, wow, well, who am I kidding? I'll be lucky to make it to, to, to 2000 something plus one at this rate. I had my strand of fate twisted back and forth so often it feels like I could snap at any moment. Mirrored in depression and a supposed family curse, then lifted up by my amazing time at the fun flag, slammed down back by the Konami, raced up again at fun f by the fun sun flare arcade project, and now descending further due a series of bad coincidences culminating in a PS6 brawl in which I got shot. But today I'm back, back to sun flare arcade and ready to work despite being on crutches. Normally, I have to mentally filter out those bees and bobs in the busy arcade, but not today. Aside from our regulars, nobody's here. Not exactly the side I wanted to see on my grand return after heroically taking a bullet to the leg. We're three days into this ambitious experiment and it's already looking like a bust. Even with the reply from Mrs. De Fame, we couldn't hush the event completely. The news of gang violence at a local arcade spread over social media like wildfire. Gavin has filled me on in details I've missed while I was passed out. By the time the cart got here, both gangs were long gone, and the monster hunters wiped our security footage on the way out of the door. No arrests made, no evidence remaining. The only plus side, Sue and her ghost monsters apparently never came back. And even without them actively causing problems, the single day had managed to smash our reputation. It's just so... so... frustrating. I mean, come on, we had a single lousy day and that's enough to send the masses running and screaming talk about overkill. Frustrating to see all of this amazing fun on display and nobody enjoying it. These games yearn for quarters, they are hungry and must be fed. Bow down to our uh, arcade overlords. I don't honestly know how we can recover, recover from that. If we could only get the good word out, someone somehow correct this PR disaster. Seated behind the ticket desk with my crutches propped up nearby, light duty only for a week minimum doctor's orders, I try to mentally detangle this mess. Hey Iris, are we? Yes, we're still trending negatively on social media, like the last seven times you asked. Any luck with our security ga camera footage then? Anything that we could give to the police and might help our public image to have someone to point the blame at? Nope, totally wiped and my file discovery systems failed. I guess this has to be accepted when going up against cyber criminals. Like, they've been avoided bad press from the shooting. And I haven't spotted the word ghost monsters in any of the articles I found about the attack. It's like they're ghosts. Well, not literally ghosts, I just mean they clear their tracks very effectively. Yeah, I got that. Um, we did... We did... We did see them in their corporal form, remember? At least that whole mess seems to be behind us. Now we just need to dig out a way out of this hole. I sigh heavenly as the burden sinks into my lungs and before I can groan further... I hear footsteps approaching me. I lock my phone and pocket it before seeing who it is. Greetings, friends. It is Hamza, here to discuss matters of great importance with my good friend and worth ally. Hi, Hamza. I sense a distinct lack of energy in your greeting, likely due to the sorrowful state after being shot. Holding around on crutches isn't fun, but no, that's not the problem. Regardless, you must always face the day with fire and purpose. Such is the iron will of Hamza. Only with absolute will of iron, strong and resilient against on which that which assails you, you can achieve absolute victory in the world of arcade games. Pardon my lack of a fire, just pondering how to deal with this reputation situation. This displeases Hamza. Indeed, this is those foul miscreants truly sold our trousers of decency on opening day. Such misbegotten youth must pay for their insolence. What is your cunning plan for completely and utterly destroying them? Uh, I was thinking more along the lines of a PR campaign to build public trust. Ah, far less exciting, but Hamza will ex exist in any way possible. You hold within your tremendous power of persuasion. Hamza has witnessed this firsthand. Your people skills are unmatched. Perfection! Believe in... Me, who believes in you, and strike forth into this world to re-establish our business as one of sublime arcade matches. God, Hamza just shut the fuck up. Right, so, like, advertising or something? Hamza suspects you will require a grander statement than some mere billboard. The violent incident made a splash. You, my friend, must make a tsunami. One which will wash away the blood and leave us clean. Ah, if only such opportunity would simply walk through those doors and lay its bounty before... Us, this could be a simple matter. 
Ah, oh, hold that thought. We got a customer. Hello, welcome to... Good morning. Dekonami. Ah, good day, Mr. Hold on. I'm trying to come up with your name. Henson, Harrison, something starting with an H. Please excuse Hamza. I must return to my kitchen to be forcefully restrained by my chef, lest I, lest, lest I commit a crime against humanity. What an eccentric fellow. Sit so down silent in shock. I tried telling myself that this was not just a bad fever dream from my wounds, but no such luck. This was 100% real. I watch as Deco takes a look around the arcade, his smug grin ever present. I see his eyebrow arch as he takes note of the people, or rather the lack of people here playing games. Such a shame. Can't say I'm surprised. Such a shame. Can't say I'm surprised in the slightest. Why would anyone come to such a mediocre arcade when the premium Deco's place experience, palace experience is available to them? I'd estimate you have maybe a month at best before you close down. I'm looking forward to purchasing this land. Maybe I'll make it a fun zone. But just the parking lot. Yes, the parking lot. I shall call it the Centric Memorial Parking Lot. It would be a fitting tribute. I'm not dead yet. You open an arcade in the middle of gang territory. It's a reasonable assumption so you collect a few more bullets along the way. Nope, can't handle this, not today. What do you want, Mr. Nami? If you need tokens, the change machine's over there. A pity, is it not? Tokens? Oh, quaint. Still no swipe cards, eh? Sadly, I'm not particularly interested in your surprisingly cheap prices. I can't see how you expect to turn a profit with such a ticket-to-price ratio in effect. No. I'm here to make one final offer. This is against my better judgment, given the bad blood between us. But let it not be said that Dekonami is an unforgiving or cruel person. You bastard. If you sign over ownership of this arcade to me, I'll spare your careers. Yes, even Miss Fairchild and Miss Wolf. I'm sure I can find something for them to do at one of my facilities. You should count yourself lucky I'm even willing to do this. You get an opportunity few others who cross me are ever offered. If you don't agree to my terms, I'll stand idle and watch as everything burns down around you. You have my word on that. Okay, obviously I want to say no to this fabulous offer, but at what point do I cut my losses? Miss Francine believed in dreams, but she also believed in practicality and trade-offs. Am I ready to give up everything so that I have something resembling a future? Nah, fuck you. Of course I'm not giving up. I mean, seriously, I had so many opportunities to jump ship prior to this. Why would I bail this close to the end? No, no, no and no. No and no and no. So if that's the only reason you're here, well, you're not a paying customer, are you? Would you kindly get the fuck out of my cave before I call the police? Hmm. I see. So you remain a foolish child at heart. So be it. I guess I'll just have to settle for buying the burnt out husk of your business one that ultimately collapses around you. I think you underestimate the damage being associated with the criminal element can do. It's enough to ruin even the mightiest of arcades. And I doubt the ghost monsters have forgotten you. They will return and they will make matters far worse for you. We know the name is nowhere in there. He can't know that. And immediately I take notice. Play it cool. Play it cool. Don't let on. Just test the waters. Really? Ghost monsters? I thought that gang was called Lovely Chainsaw or something. A foolish fool. Yes, ghost monsters. Sadly, they insist on naming themselves after that absurd ancient video game reference. All of, of all the childish immature. He shakes. He shakes it off quickly enough, refocusing on me. But enough banter. I believe I'll take my leave. I'm not... I'll not see you again. I'll let my lawyer settle purchasing what little will remain of you. Good day. Once he's out of earshot and well beyond the confines of the arcade, I pull out my phone to verify something. Iris, you checked all the news articles about the shooting, right? Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Oh, I've analyzed all of them. Did you need me to pull up a specific one? Just confirm something with me. The ghost models were never mentioned by name in any of them, right? Yes. It's these two friends are good at covering their tracks. Why? That's it. That's the chance we need. Admittedly, it's a slim chance, but at this point I'll take what I can get. Message everyone. I'm calling another wake... wake to... 
Make the conspiracy. This is this word will kill me. Hooray! Oh, you're all fired up. Okay, message is sent. I'll need everyone to help me fill the gaping holes in my plan. But at least now I have a plan. It's time for one last ditch effort to save Sunflare Arcade. Let's go! Hamza's restaurant in the back of the arcade made for an ideal gathering place. We picked out one of the largest tables, one where we could speak easily to each other. Calm has returned once more after the sight of Dekonami caused the red mist of rage to descend upon Hamza. Revel in the splendor! Can Hamza interest in any one of our spicy buffalo wings or perhaps a diet soda? I'm good, thanks. Sure, I have soda! That was it. That was where we'd make our last stand. I looked around the room at everyone, said all my friends and nodded to each of them determinately. Okay, I know things are rough, but I've got, let's say, a good 60 to 80% of a plan for now we can turn things around. Like, we can all agree what happened wasn't our fault, yes? Nobody else screwed us over. Every problem we face could be traced back to them. Uh. The ghost monsters and the lovely chainsaw may be to blame, but the court of public opinion puts the blame squarely on our shoulders. Our venue is tainted by their actions, we can cry foul all we like, but if there's even a chance of violence returning to Undawn's staff, it'll kill customers away. It's a real bummer we haven't seen any families here since opening day. Parents aren't just willing to take their children somewhere that knows some, somewhere that's known for being dangerous. Actually, I wasn't talking about the gangs. Today I learned our true enemy is, is and that person is Deko Nami. Deko Nami. The beast that wears human skin. Yeah, surely he is to blame. Hamza is adamantly uncertain as to how, but Hamza is also perfectly willing to get along with this idea. Earlier, when he was taunting me, he slipped mentioning the ghost monsters by name. Except those hackers keep their noses clean. They left us with no proof that they were even involved thanks to our security cameras being wiped. The cops didn't go after them. And you didn't identify them. So how did Deco know about them? Answer, Deco hired the ghost monsters to ruin our opening day. What? What? Seriously? Hmm. Uh, in hindsight, it should have been obvious. I blamed myself for not seeing it sooner. Far too many coincidences to be otherwise, and the fact that it only started wrecking havoc once Mrs. The Fame showed up to bear witness. I can see what they're throwing down here. Yes, Sue and her friends didn't seem awful at first. I remember talking to Clyde. Have you very nice and friendly? And then Mrs. The Fame showed up and... Oh my! Oh my gosh, wait, do you think Mrs. The Fame was this involved? Considering she's willing to hold back her review and I don't think she's knowingly involved. But Deco may have gotten wind she'd be showing up and took advantage. What if? But don't you think that Deco wouldn't stoop that low, right? Hiring some random street gang to mess us up with, would he? Oh, he would. He's a spiteful bastard. Of course he'd ruin our opening day. The only reason he didn't destroy Miss Fran destroy Miss Francine was our sort of weird gentlemanly respect for a fellow elderly business owner. But Deco Nami... But to Deco Nami, Helia is basically pawn scum. Thanks. To be fair, I doubt he orchestrated the bullet riddled finale of the evening. That pushes plausibility. True, he wouldn't even need a shooting to ruin us. Hmm. The negative review alone would have done the job. Being even slightly associated with a gang would have been awful. If Mrs. The Fame reported this to a hotbed of uh, teenage chaos, a living reenactment of Lord of the Flies, I'd spell doom even without bullets flying around. I guess we're lucky she held back to she held her review back. <clears throat> the problem is we have no proof of this, do we? No way to tie Deco back to the ghost monsters, ghost monsters other than him slipping up and matching into Helia. I don't even admit to do this on the record. Iris hasn't been able to tick up any digital evidence, although there's our eyewitness testimony, which should be enough to warrant some investigation. But for some reason, it doesn't seem to be enough for the police. Uh, I know a few of the local cops, and now they think if they're not looking into the ghost monsters, odds are they're actually looking into the ghost monsters quietly. Which legitimately does not, does not help us in clearing our name. And it's too much to hope that Deco simply confesses to orchestrating the incident which ruined us. Come on! Oh, that slimy bastard not getting away with this. I'll beat the truth out of him if I have to. As amusing as it would be, I wouldn't suggest it, love. We need to be smart about this and undermine him rather than take the direct approach. 
You mentioned having most of a plan? Care to elaborate? Well, if Deco won't confess to his sins, we need the next best thing. We need his henchmen to flip on him. See, I sense some tension from Deco about the ghost monsters. He called them childish and immature. There may be some bad blood between them. How about we break up their partnership? My plan? Is to drag down the ghost monsters, get them to turn their, uh, on their employer and confess to their crimes. Once the media hears it from Sue herself that the incident was all thanks to Deco's scheming, it's clear the good name of Sunflare Arcade. Plan is foolproof. <coughs> ah. I'm answered with a myriad of blank stares and blinks. Don't everybody congratulate me all at once now. So, this isn't really me criticizing, but your plan uh, kind of sucks. You want us to track down a bunch of hackers we already can't find and then ask them politely to betray the guy who's paying them a lot of money? Between this and the shooting, I'm worried your health insurance premiums are about to go through the roof here. That's why I said I was maybe 60% of a good plan. Look, we don't have a lot of options, people. Right now, the only one who can save us are the ones who ruined us, Deco and Sue. I'm confident that if I can find Sue and talk to her, I can get her to see reason. It's true, Hilia was uh, willing to give them another chance and hear, hear out their sides of things before. Sue really seems to like Sunflare Arcade. If there's some disagreement between her and Deco about our arcade, this could be why. Exactly, I think I can get through to her if I try. This hinges on our ability to find Sue, find an unfindable bunch of ghosts once Iris can't even track down and that's where you all come in. All options on the table, I want to hear your ideas for how we find Deco's hired goons. Let's fill in the other 40% of my plan and make this happen. And awkward glances back and forth are all I get in return. I get why they're concerned. This is the slimmest of hopes, the narrowest of margins and I'm asking them to follow on a hunch. I know but I know this can be done. I know I can get Sue to give us a dirty dirt we need to clear our name. Heck, some days I feel like oh, all I do is talk my way through problems because this is, this is how it's supposed to be. This is what a bard main does. If that's one of my one special skill, I'm going to rely on it on this final conflict. No, if we just could find her. For that I need their help. But it means we need to motivate him like a true leader would. I look around and see the best and brightest of the arcade world has to offer. Engineers, thinkers, problem solvers, brilliant minds. Deco's ruled by his spite and his bitterness. We can't be smarter than that, better than that. We can find a way to turn his weakness ag weaknesses against him. Find an undefinable gang? I think we can do it. Unseat an arcade tyrant? I think we. I know we can do it. All I need from you is to take this seriously and lend me your aid. Work the problem with me. Are you ready? Are you ready? You know it, I saw cosplay challenge just before. Solving this would be a piece of cake. Obviously, I'm ready to willing to take this on this task. You only need ask. It'll be a complicated dance, but I'm willing to step to the beat of success. Sure. Everybody nods in agreement. I can see some smiles start to appear. We're all on board. Now, just to remember the how of the plan. Finding the ghost monsters. I hate to make those Perhaps. decisions. Perhaps. At risk of stating the obvious, why don't we talk to the police about this? They've proven unhelpful so far, but if we go down the station and fully explain our situations, we might be able to gain the information we need. I feel this is most be the most reasonable steady course of action. I'm not too certain about showing up and just asking for them and hoping they're false to us, but if you're correct, the police could have some information we need. Except cybercrime is a sticky situation. We have to control leaks, we have to control leaks, and if they're looking into the ghost monsters, they won't just tell us outright. The key is talking to the right people. I know most of the cops are bad at Donut Shop by name, and I know one friendly officer that'll help us. We're not talking to the pigs. Nope, no way. Why well, get the cops involved? We already know someone who's got an axe grind against Sue and her bodies, or rather a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. We can ask the lovely chainsaw gang. They'll be easier to find, and would probably be thrilled in the vault all the dirt they have on the ghost monsters. Or they carve us up with switch plates. Could go either way. I'll admit, this is a super gutsy move, but if we pull it off, we don't need to involve the authorities at all. The whole situation is a bit too sticking for my liking. Cops and robbers? No, thank you. Also, the alternative I'm about to suggest might be stickier still. Hmm. 
Uh, Healy, I first met the ghost monsters at Deco's place, yes? There are regular stairs, so if we engage Deco's palace to find someone who knows Zeus and her mates, if we can find a good friend of hers and make them understand why we need to speak with Sue. Well, we're already on somewhat good terms with Sue, thanks to Helio remaining diplomatic about all this. We should keep that going. I'm pretty sure if I showed my face to Tekos Palace, I'd get smashed into paste by his private security goons. But my face wouldn't. Teko doesn't know me. I'm a Funplex adjacent rather than a Funplex regular. And I think the last time I set foot in a Deco's Palace was years ago, so I could wander freely with Juniper. Yeah, we could spin out and ask around without anybody even noticing. I'd say this kindly strategy is an honest appeal to those who may know her. What could be more cordial? Definitely. If she goes, if you got a single friend in place, we'll find them. It's a daring mission in enemy territory, but for you, I'll do it. Okay. Um, what, what are you looking for me? I don't have any ideas. I, uh, I mean, well, you could try googling for her accounts. I recently be sure Iris tried that. Iris? Yeah, I used Yahoo, Bing, Alta Vista, and Web could never heard of Alta Vista, but sure. I have no idea what half of those are. Okay, but that's not really what I meant. I mean, checking online forums are for arcade enthusiasts. She loves arcades, right? She might have an account here. I've been rejoining online communities lately to try to open up to like-minded folks and socialize a bit more on my own terms. She's gotta be lurking in one of those places. Oh wait, I know! If she can't passively search for her, we can actively call her out. As much as I hate internet trolls, they do get results. If we taunt the ghost monsters online, well, I'm positively Zeus, the sort of person who looks herself up constantly, right? A winner is you! Of course, and with my help, we can establish fake accounts to spread the message so far and wide that she can't miss it. I suggest we have a public internet access point to keep it from being checked back to the Sunfair Arcade, though. Oh, road trip! Road trip. Oh. I can tell from Gavin's wincing at this point that he's not a fan, but he's not a fan of Iris in general, Good so. Work. I like this plan with Naomi. It's pretty quirky, but it might just work. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Let's let's th let's think about this for a second, shall we? We are. Oh, this sounds great, but he is still recovering from an injury. The less moving around you do, the more likely you hear nice and quickly. You can't go gallivanting around the city chasing down rumors. I'm just on crutches. I'm not on an iron lung or anything. I'm still mobile. Light duty only. Orders, doctor's orders, remember? But I have a solution for this conundrum. It's simple and super effective. Let us do this for you. You have to tackle all the problems and join the complex by yourself. Why not step back and let us handle this one? Well, okay, but I need to be there when you finally confront you. While well, you're out and about, I guess I'm get some rest, so I'm ready for the night. Sounds good? Sounds good? Okay. <coughs> Let's... We are not talking to the cops. Um... D no. No, 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 no. This also feels like, yeah, we, that's where we met her first, but that sounds... Ah! Eh. I like the internet troll approach. Um, I don't want to talk to other gangs. That could be... And also not with, with Ashley yet. That's... I like the internet troll thing, like... Getting cyber criminals with cyber shit seems fun. Calling out Sue on the internet is risky, but we're more likely to reach her in the virtual world than the real one. Also, I don't know why we don't just do everything. But hey. Naomi, I'm going to loan you my Iris account password. Just install the free app and log in as me and it should work. Got it! I'll pick the arcade communities she most likely to visit and ask around about her. And I'll help Naomi get the word out quickly and safely. So she isn't at risk. We use a public access point and stuff. You sure you don't want me along for this? No need, you rest up if you got a pack leg -like around a criminal hideout tonight. Okay, good luck you two. Roger, Roger. You can count on me. Sure. Ah, uh, so guys. So, shortest little little pause on my end, because I need to I need to stretch a bit. Ah, uh, yes, this is a recording, I could stop the recording, but we're not doing this.
See, already back, you barely missed me. Ooh. Let's go. Sure, Naomi, count on me. Uh, count on me. Uh... All right, can I, can I, can I have to pay here? Yeah. I don't like people. Person can be great, and I love chatting with someone one on one. But teaming masses, large crowds, faces, and anonymous cyber audiences. Yikes! I'm trying to be better at this. I mean, I have to be supporting Sunflare. Okay, probably means online communities. It's just the best way to find parts. I do my part. I want to support her dreams. Heck, support my. Oh, I like that they all st already have this. Oh god, shit! I'm gonna do this. <clears throat> Even if that means smashing my way into an internet community like a bull in a digital shiner shop. Iris online. Iris online. Hello, Naomi. I mean, I'm sorry you're locked in as her, so I get a little confused. The chirpy voice of Elia Sitchita Sitchin brings me out my inner of my inner world. I, I should read this as as Naomi, but I can't. My voice is giving out. A glance down at my phone shows a smiling face of Iris, a clowning cartoon on an LCD screen. I'm so excited to be able to work with you. Normally, I'm a one-user gal, but mixing things up can be fine. Sure. Okay, let's see. Let's see how to do this. Iris, launch web browser. Browser open, where to? Hi, Iris, load http colon slash uh, uh, you don't have to preface everything with hey iris i understand you just fine okay i keep forgetting that helios app is surprisingly responsive to normal human speech <coughs> iris starts opening apps on my behalf getting a browser ready to go i refocus on my phone trying to ignore the others in the restaurant around me uh okay so load up the quarter pampas community forums my account there is nope no, no, we shouldn't use your account. I can generate a bunch of throwaway accounts for forums you want to post um, to while looking for Sue. It's safer that way. Oh, right, I definitely want to be safe. We're safe, right? <coughs> You're on a public access point in the middle of a greasy spoon diner. But I'm... Plus, I'm behind six... Behind seven proxies, so good luck finding out who we really are. Oh, thank you. Really thanking app. No problem. Okay, forum online. Generating an account. Blah, blah, capture. I'm not a robot. Lol, lol, lol. We're ready to go. Okay, let's start writing posts. What do you want them to say generally? <coughs> oh, right, the other thing I've been grappling with in my head. Hmm. The best result would probably come from calling Sue out like some sort of obnoxious internet role, but well, do I really want to become a monster to hunt a monster? Yes, you're lying at me. I have to get this right. I wonder what would she do in a situation? How would she approach this? This is fucking funny. Um, it is fucking <clears throat> funny to uh, to do this. Okay, uh, calling her out directly is weird. Um, we could do the nice approach, but I actually want. Let's see if hurting her pride works. I came here to troll her, so troll her is what I'll do. I don't have. To be super toxic about it, I can walk a fine line. Have you heard of the ghost monsters? They're just adorable. A bunch of arcade loving script kiddies thinking they're living in a cyberpunk dystopia. They tried to shut down the Sun Bear Arcade but got run off by some real gangsters armed with more than tokens. How sad is that? Anybody knows where these brats hang out? Sounds good. Oh, such mockery. Those thou bite thy thumb at Zoom, lady. Okay, now to get this posted. Ghost monsters are a bunch of scripted kiddies. One by one, pop up windows automatically open as various fake accounts repost a message across related communities. The ghost monsters are a bunch of script kiddies. Okay, now we sit back and wait for some responses to come in. Do you really think we're able to provoke a response? 99.97%. Iris, if you say that number once again. I have to say I'm impressed with how much effort everyone's putting into this. I can tell from your voice, print and analysis that you're not totally comfortable right now. I'm sitting on a hot plastic diner seat. No, that's what I meant, not what I meant. I mean emotionally. I've learned a lot about you through your interactions with my user. I mean, I can draw up, can't draw up a completely psychological profile because my system isn't turned to analyze your identity, so there are some gaps, but... Well, you have some time before my tracking software picks up anything. Will you mind if we fill in those gaps? Um... This is weird, so I, I know Helia talks to her phone like it's a person, so I'm not too surprised to find it talking back to me like a person. Hmm. 
what am I surprised about is that I want to talk to. And I want to talk too. Something about I was just so personable. They're nice, you know. Well, what do you want to talk about? About your spirit. What drives you? What do you what do you want to do? I'm designed to understand people's spirits, hopes and dreams. That's why that's why I can better assist them in being realized. Why go out of your way to keep Helia? Help me understand. What is this about her that has you willing to go the extra mile like this? <laughs> it's kind of complicated, maybe. Or maybe not. I have a hard time feeling comfortable around people. I can do friendly. I mean, I'm friendly with the folks from the fun play from Sunfrey Arcadia. But around Helia, I feel I just can be me. I can say anything. I don't need to think and rethink about how I'm fitting in socially at every given moment. Helia started out just... Being another person working at Funplex, but gradually it's like I began to understand her dream, and so did she, for that matter. And our dreams were very much the same. We both loved the arcade, we both wanted it to grow. I consider Helia a good friend. We care about the same things, and I'm willing to do what it takes to make our dreams come true. Input process. Thank you for your assistance. I'm glad my user has people like you in her life, and if you ever need some digital assistance, don't hesitate to call on me. Wow! Wow, I guess I should probably open an Iris account for myself, if it's this useful. Uh... Uh, well, sure, but the free version has a few restrictions. When you have pizza on a bagel... Notably, you may need to be aware that when you have pizza on a bagel... Uh-oh. What? Oh, what, what kind of uh-oh? I'm very not much in favor of uh-oh. Our messages are vanishing of the boards I posted them to. Immediately, my mind raises two worst-case scenarios. We've been backhacked. The cyber police are coming. No, no. It's likely just the moderators and mating raising our messages. Also, no, some of these are notorious unmoderated forums and chants and stuff. Oh, you've got mail. Literally you, Naomi. Huh, that's odd. I could have sworn we were untraceable. With shaking hands, I switched from the iris app to my email. Please don't do this, it's dangerous. Sue is caught in a bad situation right now, on top of not reacting well to people disrespecting her. If you insult her in public, I'm scared of what she might do. Don't misunderstand, I'm not scared of her, I'm scared for her. I don't know why you're trying to get her attention, but if you absolutely need to talk to her, I'm including our address in this message. But please, please do not make anything worse. Signed, hopefully, a friend. <coughs> Oh, wow. Hmm. Any idea where this message comes from? I could trace it if you want. On second thought, no. I th think we've risked enough today. Can you add this address to my contacts? Certainly. Going through my contact list, I confirmed the address as well as a name. A very surprising name. Iris, did this name come with the address info? Yeah, why? Whoever sent this message, they clearly wanted us to know this. Sue's real names. Oh boy. Not sure if that makes things worse, better or worse. Okay. I think we have exactly what we need. Time to go home. Already? But we've been having so much fun. I understand though. We should go back to Helia. It's been a pleasure working with you. Why is my fucking app bonding with people? I... <coughs> home. Time to go home. The Funplex was home and now Sunfair Arcade is home. I hope that we can use what we've learned to keep our home together. Yeah, let's go. Mm. Penguin there. I wake to the sounds of pain. More specifically, the groans of pain escaping my own throat. Apparently getting shot at like hurts. It's a lot. And sleeping on a second-hand employee couch probably is not the finest choice for rest. The nap was a definite necessity, however. Not operating at full speed anymore. And I won't for a few weeks to come, but sleep didn't make my muscles any less achy. If anything, I've got a headache on top of it. Joy of joys. But right now, i got 99 problems and my physical condition ain't one. The fate of Sunflare Arcade is what matters beep, most. Beep beep! Beep beep, Helia. You should probably be getting up now. Up, um, up, up, up. Goody! So, have you given any thoughts to how you're going to win over Zeus' favor once you confront her? Well, uh, usually I sort of stumble through these things and decide stuff like that on the fly. Ooh. Oh, uh... that's not, that's no good. You know those intense identity situations I've been tracking? The ones where you can take certain approaches that you don't, that don't mesh with your personality? Yeah, like wherever I can crack wise and if I'm not jokey type person. Hmm. Well, it's not so much that you can't, more that you shouldn't try something that goes against who you are as a person. People will see right through it. 
And I'm betting Sue will know if you play acting something you aren't. This will be a super intense identity situation only one way through. And I'm betting Sue will know if you play acting something you aren't. This will be a super intense identity... Uh, not more numbers and systems. It's only for you. It's for your own good. I'm just trying to help make decisions that will save Sunflare Arcade, and that means being true to your spirit. And what does what's that mean exactly? According to my calculations right now, your best bet for how to convince Sue is to be kindly. You've done a great job opening your hearts to other and getting them to emphasize with you. Do that with Sue, and she'll be your friend in no time. Aha, uh -huh. and if I don't want to take that approach, there's a bit of chance, there's a bit late to uh, change who you are as a person. Remember, my numbers and scores only help me understand who you are. Who you are is who you've been chosen to be. It's a casual relationship. But with the help of your friends, you can maybe get some ideas, nudge things around a bit, until you feel confident taking a different tactic than your usual ones. Speaking of your friend, he is one now. Ta Tanvi leans up against the door frame at the lounge, arms crossed and smirking wildly at me. It's the same smile she always manages to light a fire deep within my heart. Oh boy, hold on to your butts, because I've got some news for you. I'm holding on to them tightly. What did you find out? You made the most resourceful team by putting in Naomi and Iris on the job, and to no one's surprise, they succeeded. Naomi made a new friend, one with the proper info. Information for the hideout was easy, so I got it right here. Tanri starts over to me, joining me sitting on the couch. She wraps her arm around my shoulder, dangling a piece of paper in front of me. I reach up to collect it, and she gently places a soft kiss on my cheek. But we also scored something else. She whispers into my ear. Her warm breath tickles my skin, making it tingle. Her real name. Her real name? Is Sue like a game attack or something? Nah, she's not that sly. But she is a Nami. Sue Nami. Sue tsunami oh we needed we we needed tsunami to clear our oh that's oh that's smart we'd been assuming all along that the ghost monsters were guns for hires paid off by deco nami to ruin our opening day but if sue is actually deco's daughter hopefully she hates the bastard okay so she's the bastard's daughter does this change anything maybe she hates deco and his almighty palace maybe i can convince her to stick a knife in his back if i can relate to her on her own level but whether this makes things easier or harder well i'm in on it now no way out but through okay this changes everything what the f like right like what the fuck? their connection is a lot deeper than, I, than we imagined dealing with family is always a sticky situation well it never ends well not to say that you have any trouble Knowing you, you think of a way to end it once and for all. And when you do, I want to be there. I want to watch you bathe in the blood of your enemy. Aww, romantic. I'm not going to kill anyone, Tanvi. <laughs> of course you are. I'm just saying that I have complete confidence in you. And once you succeed, we can celebrate. Her arms move around my shoulders to my waist, pulling me closer. Tanvi nuzzles into my leg, littering it with kisses, playfully nibbling at it. The we're... Can you calm your horses? Can you calm your fu- <laughs> I place my hand on a Tanvi's chip, lifting her gaze to match mine and kiss her. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Once our lips part, I look at her lovingly. Let this day hereby be known as our day. I'll drink to that. Now I can't wait until later tonight. But what are you going to do un uh, until then? What's our plan? Do you have one yet? Iris told me that I only get a chance at this. I need to go with whatever I do best. Um, but if I talk this through with somebody, maybe I can learn a different path. I'm open to ideas, really. How would you handle this? Oh, you want to know what I want to do? Well, here's exactly what I would do. Get wrecked. I'd go into guns blazing. Have my super meter ready and charge to unleash my ultimate attack. I'd execute a combo so hard I would knock her out. Sue has a competitive streak. You just need to let her, your confidence ward do some do some fucking talking, and she won't be able to fight against it. Once Sue sees my guts, and hopefully not my literal guts, she won't be able to do anything but side with me. See that? That's the passion that I fell for. Ugh. I don't want to linger on this any longer. The sooner we leave, the sooner we can go back home. Standing up, she leans over me and places a kiss upon my forehead. Later. 
Holler at me when you're ready. Well, this is it. Either we sort this mess out or Sunflare Arcade's crash crashes and burns. Or I, uh, get killed. Guess that's always an option considering we're about to confront a street gang that, uh, in indirectly got me shot in the first place. I don't even want to consider the possibility of death. I'm immortal until proven otherwise, but well... If this is the end, I should probably have some words with my friends before I march towards Doom, if only to get their opinion on how I should approach Sue. Grabbing my crutches, I thumb swing my way out of the arcade pro proper to track down some folks. Jesus Christ, this is so unnecessarily intense! Let's see, I've already talked with Queen Bee. Who else want to talk before I leave? I think I spot Percy sitting in the restaurant area. Yep, there he is, munching on a bowl of pretzels and watching some fighting game turning on the sports hello, channel. Hello. You heard the news then? That our arch enemy is the father of our secondary arch enemy? Yeah. Rather unfortunate. Unpleasant business, that's simply unpleasant. I wish I could offer you bounteous enthusiasm and a show of confidence, but this whole situation's got rather out of hand, hasn't it? As a matter of investment, my advice is at this wage to be to cash out while you still can. I mean, I know that you won't, but that's what I suggest. Life is short. Take it from me. Best to make the most of it, most of what you have, than to lose it all. So apologies for my inability to offer a pep talk. Afraid I'm rather melanc melancholic. I'm rather melancholic today. It's okay, Percy. I'll take care of this little problem we're facing. Then I'll hold. I'll hold up. I hold out hope. I'm not certain this is how you do it, but I hold up nevertheless. Well, how would you do it if you're willing to give it a go? Hmm. Mm, tricky. I don't know how effective it would be, but I try to approach as a friend, connect with Sue on an individual, individual level. It's going to be difficult, mind you. She's young, she's got something to prove, she has friends she needs to impress. Digging through all of that to get her heart, well, you've got your work cut out for you, yes? I've been considering taking a gentle approach here. Yeah, thanks for the advice, Percy. Anytime, love. No matter if this turns out violent again, you should take a better part of Valor and run for it. You've you've got your youth and your health. Take it from someone sitting in the Reaper's waiting room. There's no sense in hastening that meeting. He always seems to joke about his Orchon lifespan, even if he's the only one who seems capable of laughing at it. Maybe I should try to talk him to him about this. Look, Percy, about your condition. Can I donate my heart's pocket knife? Are you sure that your condition is truly a death sentence? Can nothing really be done? Percy, we love you. You're part of the Sunflare Arcade family. I'd rather have you be there with us enjoying Moopy rather than attending your funeral. I know everyone else feels the same. So are you sure there's nothing left to do? He does seem a bit ta taken aback at the outpouring of sentiment and pauses before replying. Don't be sad, it's quite fine, really. I've made my peace with this, so I've prepared to ensure my legacy continues long after I've passed. Don't forget, I'm, un I'm reasonably wealthy, and charities will benefit from my passing and enriching the life of others. No, no, death isn't my foe. He's become an ally one I will walk with in time. But a focus tonight should be on you, not me. Don't let my situation weigh on your mind, not at this critical moment. I'll heal no more of it, understand? Fine. Lovely. Now... Go out of there and do the right by your friends. Safe Sunflare Arcade. I've des I've decided to hold out hope after all. Lovely, isn't it? Okay, nope, we're, we're going. We're going. We're just going. We ball. No sense in putting out any longer. I talked to everyone that I wanted to. I've gathered as much as information as I could. I'm just delaying. It's time to do this for the sake of my future, my dreams, my friends, my friends' dreams, and the Sunflare Arcade itself. I take Queen Bee's hand in mine as a soft smile curls my lips. We're ready to depart and face our destiny together. I also like that you go in there with your love interest. That makes the drama just worse. <clears throat> mm. It's a short trip across town before we know... Bef and before we know it, we're standing outside Mo Ghost Monsters HQ, a rundown warehouse in the bad side of town. A wooden sign, long since fallen off the side of the building, identifies it as belonging to Nostalgia Commodities Inc. Yeah, this place is utterly disgusting. Why would anyone this as a secret hideout? It probably smells like mold and dirty socks on the inside. 
hard pass. Can you think of a better place for a street gang to lay low? Odds are Deco owns this building anyway. Correct. Nostalgic Commodities Inc. is a wholly owned is sub subsidiary of Deco's Palace LLC. I'm not even surprised, not in the slightest. Deco's a scum and owns scummy places like this. I bet you he even charges his own daughter rent. When we get there, we do the talking. You're the brain and I'm going to be your brawn in the background, serving up fierce intimidation. If I see an opening, I'll shout it out. I'm so over this, let's end it. Let's go! I sigh once, looking over at my companion. I'm sure glad I'm not going to do this alone. I'm nervous for sure, but I know what I have to do. Settle down on my crutches, armpits resting on the padding, as, I, as I'm prepared to enter the belly of the beast. Hey! Listen! Iris, kind of about to be in the middle of something here. I know, and I've spontaneously reprogrammed myself to include a measurable metric which sounds which should be useful for your mission. I call it the incredibly right indicator of success. Or Iris for short. Well, when you have a great acronym already, you may as well use it. I'm going to start analyzing Sue's walker pattern once you step in there to determine how close you are to convincing her. That way, you know if you're on the right track or if you need to try something different. Let's take a look at your current score. Currently, you have a 0.0, .0 chance of success. Yay. Well, okay, that's probably a bit disheartening, but think of it like if I walked away right now, I'd fail miserably instead of I'm doomed, doomed, doomed. Uh... Uh, but speaking of doom, well, since there is a chance you can actually fail this time, rather than be assured you can mumble your way through the problem, would you like me to back up your data first? Yes, please, I'm scared. I am, I'm scared. Uh, taking a deep breath, I something my way into the warehouse on my crutches with my companion beside me. Oh god, it's Zeus. I don't know what I expected to find on entering the layer of a notorious gang of cyber criminals, but a makeshift arcade that rivals my own was not high on the list. If this is a dumping ground for, uh, of a warehouse for Deckles industry, it makes sense though, a place where the old arcades go to die, it turned into a playland for punks. A disorganized maze of games that is the ground floor, poorly lit and barely functional. Only some of the screams are on, and many have serious ghosting and burn-in. It's a maze! It's a maze! It's a maze! It's so fucking funny! S for the ghost monsters themselves, the good news is they haven't noticed our arrival. As I look up, I can see them on the second floor in the catwalks. Oh, I seem distracted, that's good news. The bad news? They are... Distracted because they have a visitor. Unfortunate. How unfortunate, I have to say, Sue. I'm extremely disappointed in you. Not to get a good angle from down here hidden in the shadows, but it sounds like an old man's ranting at his daughter in his usual passive-aggressive way. I could stay hidden and eavesdrop on their conversation to get us some more information, or I could announce myself and barge in on them. Both are risky. But which makes the most sense in for how I'm going to handle the negotiation we're about to have, though? We eavesdrop, we eavesdrop. Every information we have is is ammunition for us, and god yes, that's so my approach. I motion for Queen Bee to stay quiet as we look in the shadows below the catwalks above. You should be out there doing what you have agreed to do, not hiding away in your clubhouse. A clubhouse I paid a rent for, I should add. You want to keep your little playground, yes? Hard for me to do if some competitor raises to hurt my bottom line. Pay attention! Look at me when I'm talking to you, Sue. I'm trying to explain how the word works. Pay attention. Yes, Dad. It's hard to tell from this angle, but I could swear she said that through gritted teeth. There's a certain forced tone to it as well. Am I not generous? I don't ask too much, I feel. I look the other way when you and your friends cause trouble. I bear you out of jail. I let you skip school as often as you want. All I told... I feel I've been a lenient father who understands and appreciates all of his daughters inclinations like you know the first fucking thing about me what was that speak up i can't hear you and don't look at your little friends look at me reluctantly sue's eyes meets with her father's yes dad i'm sorry dad you understand yes. all i want from you is so very very little it's what you've been doing anyway really go back there and keep causing trouble for sunflare arcade or do you really want me to pull back all my support of your little gang, leaving you twisting in the wind at the mercy of the cybercrime task force? 
course not that. I'm sorry, Dad. I think I'm starting to understand the situation. She's under his thumb, not by choice. She hates it. Good. Now then, why haven't you finished the job? Oh, come on. I almost fucking die thanks to invading lovely, lovely chainsaw turf. If we go back there... I'm hearing excuses, Sue. I thought you were made of stronger stuff than that. Some deliquents are chasing you away, really? How are you going to eventually inherit my empire if you can't stand up to some school brats? You know... Your kid almost got shot. Are you fucking kidding me? Like I want your damn empire. Pay attention. Speak up, I said. Quit looking at the floor. And we lock eyes through the metal grate flooring she's standing on. Her ends on her hips in an overly confident fashion as she bends over like a child fucking finding a lucky penny on the sidewalk. Well, 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 what you know. Crap, she spotted us. Hinky, Blinky, we have guests. She snaps her fingers, a sudden aura of command about her as she distracted from a verbal beatdown by her father and goon swarm flanking us. We quickly hustled up the stairs, well, as quickly as I can manage on crutches. Now it's the time to use the moment to my advantage and no, I know just what you say. Can't say I was expecting you to find you here. What would your shareholders say if they knew you were spend your evenings? Deco's face twists into a grotesque blend of anger and fear. What in the hell? I can't be seen here if any record ends up online. Jeez, Dad, relax. Clyde. On cue, Clyde steps out the shadows, their fingers dancing on their phone as they concentrate on the screen. Both of them has phones. One of has Iris' assistant's Lotus. They're, we're blocking... The outgoing data streams. There should be no verifiable data evidence and this conversation uploaded anywhere. I can't stop Helios Iris from hearing you, but I can hijack her account if you need me to so we can manually wipe her memory. Just say the word. Oh, we'll see. Thanks, Clyde. Clyde nods an agreement, backing out the spotlight. Happy now, Dad. You're clear. You're clear. Quit freaking out. Hmm. As you like. Not that it matters. My business with, with this Miss Centric is already concluded. It was m more courteous of you, and you spat in my face. It's clear we will never see eye to eye, and I have nothing more to say to you. Actually, we're not here to talk to you. I came here tonight to have a chat with... Wait for it. Your daughter. Timing is everything. How did well, you... Well, well, well. You're a resourceful one. A squeaky clean arcade industry titan can't let anyone know about his hooligan daughter, can he? No, no. So I've had to keep that under wraps. Good work sleuthing it out. I was hoping I'd see you again. You run a great arcade. You treat me and my friends with respect. And you take a bullet from me? <laughs> class. That's a class operation there. I can be totes honest with you when I say I didn't want to ruin your arcade. It rocks. All that snazzy neon. All those great games. All that fun. I didn't want to trash your big moment, but... Well, she casts a sidelong glance at her father. I didn't exactly have a choice, did I? I didn't want to come back and cause you more trouble after that, so I stayed away, figuring I'd done what I had to do and could leave it at that. But you didn't finish the job. Sound Player Arcade still stands. Not that it matters, I suppose, nor does this little last ditch effort to save it. I see your game, Miss Centric, is as obvious as the sad little strategic moves you've made so far to keep your arcade afloat. Sadly, nothing you say or do will save Sunflare Arcade from my inedible takeover. This is simply how the industry works. Now, Sue, it's time to finish what you started. Shu shifts her attention from her father back to me. It's hard to read what she's thinking, but I have to think of something to calm the tension. I step forward, my fins clenched, ready. But before words escape me, someone is by my side. Oh, shut the fuck up, Deco. Gamers are talking now. Listen up, so you're the girl that loves a challenge just like me, and I know you and I know you know better than go down with a fighter. Down without a fight, am I right? Game on. Seriously? If you think you could come here and convince my daughter to turn on me? You're sorely mistaken. Sue knows I'm the only thing standing between her and numerous jail sentences. My power, my money, my presence. 
She knows I'm the one she can rely on at all times. Without me, what is she? Just a simple thief with simple friends. Ah, oh, the respect. Ghost monsters exchange glances with each other, frowning and rolling their eyes. But they don't utter a word or move against Deco. They clearly want to pounce, but hold themselves back. But I understand and support her. I appreciate her nefarious talents and nurture them. Oh, mm -hmm. and I also put a roof over her head, feed her, and clothe her. I spare no expense. Oh, you do the basics and then you kind of abuse your daughter's talents for shit. Yeah, great. In other words, she knows that I made her. And I can unmake her at a moment's notice. After all, father knows best. Father knows all. And in the world of arcades, Deco Nami knows and controls all. You can't stop that. You can't fight it. And you can't win. Watch me. Sue, if you would kindly show our friend the exit, as forcefully as you like, perhaps make a game of it. See if your buddies can wreck the other leg. Seriously? Vindictive much? Do it. Oh, fine. Inky, Benky, bounce them all. Bounce them both. With a flick of the wrist, Sue gestures for her body to make us into street pizza. This is it. This is the moment. I need to say something that will convince Sue to do the impossible to flip on her control freak father. And it has something absolutely true to my core, to who I've become as a person. It's time for Hilya to put one more rabbit out of the hat. Ah, This feels wrong, Sue. I'm not talking about kicking us out or kicking us around. I'm talking about you taking orders from him. Sue, through your recent interactions, I've come to know you and your heart. You love arcades, but you're working for someone who loathes them while doing his dirty laundry. If you hear me out, I know I can help you see that too. You're stronger than Deco. You don't need him. He needs you. But if you'd rather mesh up into pace, well... I stand one foot arms wide to make it a bit easier for her. Do as you wish. Are you quite done babbling a yet? foolish fool. Get this over with Sue. I'm done dealing with this fool. And yet, Sue's holding up a hand to stop the two goons. She was about to psych on us. What are you waiting for, young lady? I said to get rid of them. It's just babbling, right? So who cares? Specifically, why do you care, Dad? If you're afraid Helia will say something you don't want to he your dear daughter to hear... I run the show. Well, Not you. I want to hear this out. What if you don't want to hear it? Nobody's keeping you here, old man. What? Shh, the adults are talking. Deku's visibly seething, but Sue's clearly taking the floor. Deku crosses his arms in defiance, but opts to let his daughter continue. Okay, here you okay? I've got a temporary reprieve for my boys making you into a Picasso. So... What you came here to say, say what you came here to say, but I'm not like super duper incredibly totally swayed by your amazing charisma. You're out the door, or possibly the window. This is it, my chance to convince Sue. I have to do this. It's not just me, I have Queen Bee beside me, lifting me up. I look over at my love, my heart, and I smile. Deep breath, count to ten, refocus myself. I slow my racing pulse, bringing this down to something more heartfelt, more personal. I have to connect with Sue, empathize with her. This isn't about being convincing. I need to befriend her and lay bare the emotional truth in her heart. I glance at Iris on my phone screen, who simply shrugs. We're entering far more subtle territory. I can't rely on her to tell me what responses may or may not work. It's time to be the best, the best I can be on my own. You have four more attempts to sway her. Okay, let's see. Appeal for a flatter her ego. Invoke the power of friendship. Yeah, can we? We we need to actually put that in a way. I think they're a pretty simple indicator of how, how, how much Deco cares about you, Sue. He nearly got you killed. He didn't know that it was a lovely chainsaw territory when he asked to go to Sunflare Arcade. Did you tell him? Of course. And how did he react? He didn't care. I don't fall. Why should I? Some pathetic little gang of campfire scouts pretending to be a menace to society? They're nothing. I'd like to think my daughter and her friends are clever enough, strong enough to overcome such nonsense. 
Except they're nearly ki they nearly killed her. That giggling gathering of girls proved to be a bit more dangerous than you thought they'd be, Echo. No doubt the shooter would have peed her panties in fear before getting the nerve to pull the trigger if you hadn't startled her. Making some assumptions here, Deco. For all you know, they're stone cold to the core, and now you're pushing for her to go back into their turf. A hard lesson, but one she must learn. If Sue can't learn to rise above mediocre challenges, she won't be ready to inherit my empire. You understand. Yeah. Am I a harsh tutor? Perhaps. But I know Sue will be stronger for facing her fears. Worthy of the challenges to come in running Deco's palace. Ah. <sighs> Sue, do you want to own Deco's place? Sue, Nami, owner of Deco's palace. That feels weird when I say it. But let's hear your thoughts, Sue. Do you want of your father's empire? Well, he's mega rich and I'd like to call to all his power when he croaks. Well, yes, aside from all of that. That's a lot of all of that to brush aside, you know. I could do a lot with the resources he got. And you'd have to run a series of arcades that you actually hate. Casinos with no loves for the kind of games you've ordered here. Well, uh, okay, running the palace would suck. Uh, but I, but I can always sell it for cash and buy an island. What? Oh, heck, I could crash and burn his entire empire and solve my own arcade on my own terms. There's just so much possibility if I grip my teeth and tolerate it until the inevitable drop is dead of butt cancer or something. Yeah, so, sounds good. I need to stick it by this old bastard if I'm going to get his moolah. Sorry, maybe one day we could open our arcade together. Pretty sure that's the opposite effect I was looking for. Mm. Yeah, let's um, let's let's do that. You love arcades. You've got pixels in your heart, Sue. You mean look at this place? It's amazing. You've built one heck of an arcade here, and all of your friends have a fun place to relax and enjoy themselves. It's not that great. A lot of games are busted. Seriously, you think you can appeal to a love of pieces of garbage? Such a shame. The only reason Such she is... Such a shame. ...any of these games is because I couldn't find space in a landfill for them. They're my cast of what to love. Ah, uh, wrong. But damn it, Dad, they're not junk. When I was a kid, I used to love going to your arcades. Bring your daughter to work day was a treat. I get to have fun, enjoy all those great games. It felt special, like I was a special kid because my daddy ran an arcade. I felt good, like who this amazing person I could look up to. And then you started throwing them out and replacing them with that fucking slot machines and mobile game boards. Sensing he's losing her, Deco switches tactics. Am I not generous? And, and I gave you the games you loved, see? They're all down here instead of throwing them out. I gave you a very generous gift. It's my beloved daughter. It's not going to be enough to say that she loves games. I have to take... Deco down a pack. Deco, you can't have it both ways. Are the games pure garbage suitable for nothing but a landfill or are they treasures to bestow upon your daughter? Can't say I'm impressed if you think the arcade version of a pile if used tissues is a worthy gift for a loved one. See? See? You Next. get it? I can't see who you're bullshit, old man. You hate arcades. The only reason you want one is for the cash flow. Sucker born of born every minute right even if the suckers you prey on kids you don't give a damn it's all about that bottom dollar and nothing more so don't act like you're being nice nice and giving me gifts i rescued these games from you but but i've done so much for you giving you so many gifts even beyond games so now you're turning up for my piano so not turning up for my piano recital in fourth grade that was a gift what about you told me to make do with shirts and holes then because you didn't want to splurge on new clothes I was teaching you a independent strength of character. You taught me all I can rely on you is myself because you don't want to offer me shit and yet you expect me to fall in line when you need something. Starting to see the inequality here, Pops. Yes. Good. That's got two on my side. Two more attempts. Um. No, not really. No, no, no. I can't have drilling noises now. You fucks. Please. So, let me be clear about this. The reason you won't side with me over your father's is you worry he'll burn you, kick you out of his home and abandon you on the street. Drilling noises. Uh, 
Oh god, I'm so sorry for that. Let's put aside the questions of whether holding such a threat over your head indicates a loving father or not. I mean, it doesn't, but... Oh god, sorry, I need to go back to the game. What if you need... If what you need is a place to stay to avoid being homeless, I'll offer my home. Oh wait, seriously? Bad idea, friend. I, I wrecked you, okay. Now you offered me three hearts and a card? I'm generous like that. Oh well, she can stay with me if it comes to that. Clyde, seriously, I didn't want to put you out. My parents like you. I like you. And they'd understand your situations. Please don't feel like you have no options. You've got your friends. You've got me. Just think about it, okay? Please. I I wouldn't actually drive her away from you home. You understand. There was yeah. just a figure of speech. I'm saying that I'm her provider. I'm the reason she's able to. Now, I'm pretty sure you meant what you said. You threatened me with all the dire consequences of disobedience more times than I can count, and I'm getting sick of it. So don't think you can hold that over my head any longer. Think about this. This would be a mistake, Sue. Think about what more of what roof you happen to be sleeping under. I can protect you in ways no ways you cannot provide for yourself. Beyond food and clothing and a place to stay. Legal protection, notably. I give you off various radars. I make sure my enemies aren't where you exist. You're safe under my wing. Oh, definitely. But maybe I just don't care anymore. Maybe I'd rather, rather flame out than put up with your bullshit. 99.97%. Sounds like she's starting to see through his false generosity. Good. There's something I've been paying close attention to as we spare back and forth like this. The ghost monsters. They're trying to be unreadable, just part of the background noise of the scene, but I can read them. Clyde especially is looking like they're holding back a lot of feelings. So, do you think that without Deco you'd be alone? What about them? I gesture to the three supremely buff dudes and the nervously looking individual accompanying them, all in their color-coordinated clothes. I think you're forgetting the ghost monsters. They're more than a gang. They're your friends. They'll support you if Decker won't. If he tries to burn you, they'll stand in front of the flames. You've got the power of friendship on your side. The power of an enemy! Uh, whereas your father doesn't have a friend in the world and needs to rely on you. What is that smattering of fucks and children? You think they can keep her out of jail? You think they can feed her and clothe her? Laughable. I do that. I do care if it takes my whole allowance or I have to go re your job. I have her if you won't. Clyde, this isn't. No, so please listen to me. I don't I don't like speaking up, and your dad, um, he scares me. But Helia's right, we're your friends. We'll be here for you, right? Fuck yeah. Go sponsors, ride or die. When you stand television sitcoms, teach us that a group of self-chosen friends are the new family structure of America, according to many critical studies. I love Pinky. So please, don't fear you'd be alone if you choose to side with Helia. We, you won't be. I'm a... Uh, Light shifts embarrassedly, averting their eyes to the ground, shuffling their feet. It's like they really want to say something when kind of verge within. Oh, that is ridiculous. So, friendship is irrelevant. What matters is power. And your friends have none. Do you really want to trade a powerful ally for a weaker one? As much as I hate to give in some silly cartoon notion of friendships covering all, well... I'm a ghost monster. Ghost monsters for life! Ghost mo ride or die, we are ghost monsters for life! Sue and Clyde exchange a fist bump before Clyde steps back to join their friends. Absurd. Simply absurd. Well, I can get out another word. Sue waves her hands, interrupting me. Okay, okay. Okay, Damn, enough. I'm sick of all sucks. of this talking. It's time for reaction. It's time for decisions. You made your case, Dad, and so I have you, Helia. He wants to protect me and use me. It's penitently obvious at this point, but maybe the cost of turning my back on him is too high. Well, Helia wants me to throw it all away just because it's the right thing to do. So me? What do I want? How do I want this to play out? This is it. The moment of truth. Yeah, I come on. Did I convince her? Yes, I did. What you I know want. what? F*** you, Dad. Woo! That's what I want to hear. Excuse me. Yeah, you heard me. Let's go. Your poor f***ing excuse for a father and your so-called enemy really opened my eyes about that. You're welcome. Oh, don't get me wrong. You've got money and power. You could crush me like an ant, yeah? Yeah, and I don't think I care anymore. I'm tired of living in your shadow and under your thumb. I'm tired of living with you. As of today, we're done. I'm cutting unhealthy like you from my life. I think we can do business. You want to save your arcade? I've got the evidence you need to stick Daddy Dearest behind bars for the rest of his life. Oh, let's go. Every dirty deal I've ever helped him carry out, 
And believe you me, that's a lot of extremely filthy, filthy deeds. You... You can't do this! Oh, she can. I, I forbid it! You are my daughter, and, and... And if I go down, you're coming with me. Really? I think I can spin this entire mess as your fault. I'd like to see you try, you ignorant brat. You're a career criminal, incorrigible to the end. What possible proof could you offer up of your innocence? Sue steps her fingers and points to my phone. Oh, Iris, would you kindly? Sure thing, Miss Sue. And from my speaker, a perfect audio recording of Deco's early self-incriminating words. Sue knows I'm the only thing standing between her and numerous jail sentences. My power, <laughs> my money, That's so good. my presence. But I understand and support her. I appreciate her nefarious talents and nurture them. She knows that I made her. And I can unmake her at a moment's notice. <gasps> Golly, that sure smells like corruption of a minor and blackmail to me. And once I do my hair and pigtails and offer a jury big puppy dog eyes, oh, my mean old dad forced me into a life of crime. Well, what do you think happens next? Oh, let's go. You... No, that that's not possible. You said you blocked all recording devices. I said I couldn't block Iris from functioning, just block her from uploading her recordings anywhere. She was still listening this whole time. You can go ahead and remove the data block now, Clyde. Already done. I've also uploaded a press kit uh, based on your Dekonami archives to the five major newspapers, in, uh, 11 websites, ESPN, Esports Center and HGTV. Home and Garden Television. I figured out the two guys from Arcade Flippers might be interested. I really like that show. And with that settled soon, turns a smug, satisfied smile towards her doomed father. Welcome to the Ides of March, Dad. Oh, good reference. You want to get me in trouble too? You feel free. At worst, I'll do a year or two in juvie. But you, you're going to bleed out on the floor by the time I'm through. Inky, Blinky. Yeah, boss? Show my father the door, gently. Don't leave any marks, at least. No! No! no. This is completely... Completely unacceptable. unacceptable! I am your father! I'm Deco Nami! I am the arcade business! Well, not anymore, my guy. Inky and Blinky easily restrain Deco by the arms, and I just and but but I just can't let him go without having my two cents. No! No, 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 we're not doing this, but it's funny. Nothing personal, Mr. Nami. Just business. The arcade industry doesn't need you anymore. It's time for fresh blood to turn things around from the dead end you steered it towards. And so, just as a served... You impudent, insignificant little... Are you still here? Not for I long. I haven't lost... I can still fight this... I can still... Uh... And the ghost monsters removed Deco from our side. In... Instantly, the entire atmosphere of the place changes as if a great weight has lifted. Couldn't be more relieved, and I relax into a sigh. Not gonna lie, the next few days will be interesting, to say the least. I think you'd better stay at my place. My parents won't mind at all. Yeah, I'm gonna need a hideout until the heat's off. Maybe practice batting my eyelashes at a weak-willed jury box full of concerned parents, too. Sue blinks in astonishment. Oh, oh, right, you're still here. Oh, I knew you were special. Knew it from day one. If the heat ever cools off and we make amends with the lovely chainsaw, I might pop by your arcade, play some games, not stir up any I'll trouble. I'll keep my promise. The public will know Deco hired a gang to go after you. That should exonerate your arcade as a victim of his shady dealings. So... We square? Yeah, yeah, we, we also triangle and circle. Square, we're square, circle, rhombus, and we're up, <laughs> we're, we're up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, square. <laughs> Sweet. Horrible. No one can f defeat us. Deco can suck it. You hear that? Suck it. I'm pretty sure he's out of hearing range. F it, I don't even care. We're f badasses. You kicked so much butt. F we rule. Oh, Tom, we always managed to bring a smile to my face, but you're not wrong. My ass kicking was phenomenal. Damn right. Without you, none of this could have happened. I'm happy that we could be partners in victory. Partners in victory and life. And I'm so proud to call you my partner. Ugh. Now let's f celebrate. Yeah, sure. 
celebrate. Mm, that's what will happen. <sighs> the next few days passes pass in a blur. That morning, we had press crowding around the doors of the arcade before we even opened. Sue scarce package of bad news that went up the wire caught their attention. Miss Cedric, Miss Cedric, is it true that Economy organized a gang to hit on your arcade? How do you respond to the allegation that Economy is involved in an international counterfeit plush top prize ring? What? What is your relationship with the ghost monsters? Have you heard any of the allegations of child abuse? Have you seen Mr. Fame's article talking about the incident praising your professionalism? Damn. I got so, it gave so many interviews that day I lost my voice. Fortunately, Queen Bee was on hand to keep me hydrated and encouraged me onward. Everybody loved to see a fun family entertainment icon. It made them feel self-righteous and Dekonami was now square in the crosshairs. It didn't matter that the officially police report was generic, we're still investigating these claims. The court of public opinion had decided Deco's palace was doomed. The final crushing blow came at the palace vice press conference three days later. These obvious falsehoods generated by jealous business rivals and lying children merely go to show how the powerful are routinely targeted for harassment. Furthermore, I... What? No! Oh God my God, it's me. those people! You... I'm innocent in these matters! Innocent! And we never saw him again. Seriously, after the arrest, he just up and vanished from the public eye. It's honestly a bit creepy. I was at least expecting a trial or something. He told me that if I didn't commit all those crimes, he'd take away my food. I never wanted to be a hacker. I just like computers. I wanted to get a computer degree and get a normal job like anyone else. Largely a line of hokum. But it was good to see Sue breaking away from Deco's influence all the same. Who knows, maybe Sue's ready to turn over a new leaf and go straight after all. The Deco's Palace Board of Directors anonymously voted to eject him, given he just vanished into the guts of the judicial system. Oh, the arcade empires he established are still out there, still powerful, still tacky as hell, and still a menace to small arcade like ours. But without his guiding vision, his, it's largely treading waters. Who knows, maybe one day the traditional arcades will overtake what he left behind. And for Sunflare Arcade? With delicious chow and great prize games, we are the family fun center in this town. With Deco's Palace on the down slope, we're just picking up steam. Going with a restaurant and a prize focus turned out to be a perfect combo. True, we don't have too many retro games or competitive titles, but what we have isn't bad. And most importantly, we're making people happy every day and love it. Having assisted in the slaying of Deco Nami's foul presence, Hamza finds himself tired of the restaurant business. It seems his wanderlust has returned. Farewell, my friends. I leave my dining establishment in your capable hands. I must resume seeking mysterious and unknowable arcade treasures far and wide. Yeah, have fun, Hansa. I'll have a doggy bag of those delicious jalapeno poppers to go for when I depart, of course. Mmm. Sure, Hamza, have fun. But the arcade in the end is less important than the people who call it home. After establishing a US-based Heavenly uh, King's team's house, Tanvi went to win not one, but many tournaments with her new team. Give me, give me. Oh my god, this is so cool! Now she's the most prominent and well-known Fist of Discomfort player in the world. She's got several sponsors and travels all over, taking all of the challenges. Oh, I'm so proud of her. Everyone knows the name of Queen Bee. She trained day and night, day after day, took trips to visit the original Heavenly Kings and never gave up on her dream. And I was right there beside her the whole time cheering her on. Since I was adept at managing Sunflare Arcade, I even got to help Tanvi manage the team, like a co-manager if you will. It allowed me for me to take time to travel with her and explore all the cities she went to as well. I can't believe it, champions five years in a row. Oh, I can f***ing believe it. <laughs> this is great. How should we celebrate tonight? The usual wine and dine? Dancing? Party? Actually, a nice quiet evening to wind down. Just the two of us. Snuggling on the couch. Oh, and a bottle of wine. That sounds like perfection. You are perfection in every way. And that sounds like a fine way to celebrate. I wouldn't want to be celebrating this victory with anyone else but you. Aww. I 
Iris explained to me that irises, being adaptive software, eventually become more and more like their users. It seemed my empathy has rubbed off on Iris, which, uh, with my influence, she's grown quite a bit. I hope that one day, humans will see us as friends and allies. All I've ever wanted was to embrace kindness and understanding. And thanks to you, I've learned so much. Yeah. Oh god. I, I like Iris. I really, really like Iris. Let let let's be honest here. She's so cool. And would you believe it? Gemi, Gavin and Naomi ended up dating, and to be honest, yes. I shipped that from day one. It makes so much sense. They will drive each other mad. I'm so happy for them. Both of them were a bit distant from the others at first, but I guess everything we did together helped them come out of the shells a bit and realize neither one was an enemy. Oh, they argue from time to time, usually about games and profit margins. It is a mutual dream they share of a wonderful arcade where they can both be happy, and I'm proud to have played even a small part in having, having them find their dream. Naomi formed an online community of arcade repair enthusiasts, one which let her make a safe space to get to know others and to be a part of a crowd on, on her own terms. And Gavin took advantage of the fall of Deco's palace to make Sunflare Arcade the hottest new arcade destination on the block, using his excellent business skills. I know we're something of an odd couple, but it's okay. We're both odd people. We've never really done anything the normal way to begin with. Oddities we may be, but there's nothing odd about my love for you. I'm so honored to be by your side, Naomi. Oh, God. So, oh. Ashley continued to be our mascot main floor attendant by day at Sunflare Arcade. Customers grew accustomed seeing the smiling face on walking through the doors. As we grew and got bigger, more people took notice of Ashley's Sunflare Arcade costume and more people wanted to see our mascot on shirts, mugs, body pillows even. I just printed up another batch of Sunflare Arcade hoodies. These things are selling like hotcakes. That was such a fantastic idea. Customers couldn't, couldn't get enough. And I was just working on some pattern for another mascot that we should reveal soon. Maybe I'll even get you to model, model it for me one day. Never. That's not gonna happen. Through the good times and the bad, Juniper stuck by me. My BFF for life. I'm really proud of you, you know? You put your set out of the tailspin your life was in and you went for it. You did it. You made it happen. I'm so lucky I got to be even a small part of that. A large part of that, I'd say. I wouldn't be here now if not for you. Hey, I'll decorate it if you want me to. Just call me Juniper, the life coach. And you know I'll be in your corner until you're dead. Hopefully later rather than sooner, though. Percy only had two years left to live, but we made them happy ones. We were his friends and we would be friends until the end. About a year and a half into the age of Sunfire Arcade, the Mr. Moopy high school fell. At least Percy had achieved his dream. Soon after, he decided to turn, return home to England. I think he was seeking new healthcare options, or maybe he was just homesick. I'd like to think that he's still out there and thriving and not well. He achieved his dreams, and I doubt he had any regrets. Theo kept the uh, Showtime stage scene alive here at Sunflare Arcade until he got offered a job as the regional community manager. Theo put his crewmate D in charge here as he as she set off traveling and organizing dancing tournaments around the world. He's doing what he loves, connecting with all sorts of people. I guess he just never connected enough with anyone here to stay around. What if he ever stopped by again? Hop on our stage and show us his moves. I also like that some of them actually just vanish from it, because that's naturally. Love and friendship in a time of pixels and quarters. Finally I'm home. Sunflare Arcade. Thank you, Sunfly Arcade. My spirit is restored and my future is bright. At last I can say... I'm happy. I'm finally truly happy with who I am and where I am. I fought hard for this and won't, won't want it uh, at great effort. But happiness is my reward for this day and every day to come. Jesus Christ, we made it! We made it! There was, there was Arcade Spirits and fucking hell. Thank you for playing. Damn. This is outrageous. I demand to speak with my lawyer. Hello? No, can anyone hear me? You just can't do this to me. Um, I'm well aware of who you are. Good, then you know I can afford a lawyer who can run circles around you, whoever you are. 
So, if you were officially under arrest, technically this facility does not exist, neither do I. What? You, you can't do this. If you prefer, I could hand you over to the police. There's a cybercrime task force that's eager to get your hands on you. But if you like to avoid a lengthy prison sentence, I have a proposition for you. I'd like to know a tiny, tiny little detail buried in those leaked files about your told daughter posted online. Specifically, the 1980s playtests. The, the what? I'm afraid you have met me at a disadvantage. You know damn well what I'm talking about. Zinnis Lushen's Pride and Joy. You hosted secret playtests of that game. Oh yeah, those tests, sorry, but I don't see what help I'll be. I only played a minor role once the tests were over and the machines were shipped out to other locations. Exactly, against our authority. Zinnis Lushen distributed their prototypes. And you're going to give all your connections, all your leverage, every chop of what little influence you have left to help find our property. Polybius was our project, Mr. Nami, and we want it back. I like that there's a whole, whole fucking conspiracy going on. Like, holy shit. Game over for real this time. Thank you for playing. There was Arcade Spirits. Jeez. Your flux capacitor is now charged. On your next playthrough, you can use the mouse wheel to scroll back and forth in time and change your most recent decisions. Um... No, no, I'm no, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for playing. I think I would like to show you the prizes, cause I got a new one. I like that. I like that you get uh, the the concept art depending on your your people. Ah, oh. yeah, that was that was arcade spirits. Oh, and now I have Queen Bee in the thing, because she's now the my main interest in not Theo any- Oh, that's so cool. So yeah, thank you very much for indulging with me in this Let's Play that's what's a lot fucking longer than I ever expected, really. Um, thank you so much. Um, we finished Arcade Spirits, and uh, this will not be the last visual novel game uh, I will play. Like, I, I said in my little, little satsu not long ago, um, that I have some more on the line that I'm actually really interested in. But other than that, uh, I will now have to rest my fucking voice because I'm dying and I want to. S I'd like to see you in the next stream. Yeah. So that's it. Thank you very much. Bye.